Hello everyone this is Kawainame TV, this video is all about what if Sasuke and Naruto went back in time part 4, this story is a fanfiction, don't forget to like share and subscribe kindly click the bell button for more updates. Chapter 34 The hospital was oddly peaceful as the sun rose over the village. After all the insanity of the past few days, what with Orochimaru and everything that entailed, it felt almost as though it were holding its breath, waiting for the other shoe to drop. That wasn't to say it was going to, though. But it also wasn't entirely out of the question. For Team 7, the two days had full of uncertainty and worry. No one had come to ask them for their report. Naruto still hadn't woken up. They hadn't received any news on how the exams were going, if they were even continued at all. Overall, there were too many questions and no one giving them answers. For the two conscious time travelers, it was infuriating. You're already awake. A soft voice mumbled by the wall. Looking over, Sakura saw Karen blearily blinking up at them, glasses askew from the awkward position she'd just woken up from. She had stayed both the first night and last night with them, sleeping on a chair next to Naruto's bed. Not that either of the two were complaining. For some reason though she'd refused to leave her cousin's side whenever a nurse or doctor asked her to. She claimed she needed to be there for him, that family had to stick together. Which anyone could tell she meant. But Sakura knew better. She saw it in the girl's discarded headband, and the scars along her skin. She had nowhere else to go. She was all alone. Yeah, just woke up, Sakura answered, noticing the girl shift to cover her arm. You look exhausted, she pointed out. Are you sure you don't want the keys to Naruto's place? You can sleep and take a shower there. He wouldn't mind. Karen just grimaced, looking back down at her cousin. Her red eyes were filled with sadness and what looked like regret or grief. It was possible she was remembering something painful. Sakura didn't doubt it. From what she remembered about 17-year-old Karen, she'd had a tough life even before Sasuke. Sakura couldn't imagine what was going through her head at the moment. I don't want him to be alone, the girl finally muttered, hands fisting over her knees. He won't be. He has us, Sakura stated. You both do. A soft blush bloomed across Karen's cheeks, small smile forming on her lips. Thank you Sakura, she murmured. Sakura returned the smile, eyes soft and kind like she knew Karen needed. Of course. Then it was quiet for a moment, sunlight from the rising sun spilling into the room and a peaceful silence hanging in the air. Until. Geez, get a room you too. Sasuke. You gross. The girls shrieked in unison at the now awake Uchiha, who was staring idly at them. Sasuke, that's disgusting, Sakura gasped. She's 13 and I'm, 17. She paused. I'm 12. A small flicker of understanding passed across Sasuke's face, but it quickly returned to its usual passive apathy. Th that's not that big of an age gap, Karen exclaimed behind her. Sakura had to physically stop herself from flinching. If only you knew, whatever, Sasuke sighed, leaning back into his pillows. Just stop being weird. You're the one being weird, asshole. Sakura shouted back, veins bulging in her fist. Behind her, a flustered Karen sweet dropped. You guys are insane, the poor Uzumaki muttered. Sadly this is nothing new, was all Sasuke said. Just then, the door to their room suddenly slid open, drawing all their attention. Looking up, Sakura was surprised to see Kakashi Sensei standing on the threshold, body language deceptively relaxed. Immediately she knew something wasn't right. Sensei. She asked, heart starting to beat faster in her chest. What are you doing here so early? It was around 6 in the morning. Not necessarily early for a shinobi, but not really an appropriate time to visit your students in the hospital. Well, not appropriate for anyone who understands social cues, that was. Ma, just wanted to pop in and see how my kitties were doing, he brushed up, I smiling at the three of them. Something about it seemed off though, but Sakura couldn't put her finger on it. Karen, he spoke up again, turning to the Uzumaki. Why don't you go back to Naruto's place and get some proper sleep and a shower? I'm sure he won't mind. Just as she did when Sakura suggested it, Karen's face fell in dismay, red eyes flicking down to her unconscious cousin before going back up to the Jonin. Or are you sure? She asked in a small voice. I don't want him to be alone. He'll have us, don't worry, Kakashi Sensei continued, voice sounding just the tiniest bit strained. Sakura's eyes narrowed in response. Besides, he continued, I'm sure he won't mind you using his apartment anyway. Karen looked doubtful, but didn't contend it. Meanwhile, across from her, Sakura was scouring her sensei to see what his real reason for wanting the girl out of the room was. He might be a skilled janin, but she'd known him for almost six years. 
something wasn't right here, he was tense, despite how he tried to hide it. She could tell in the fact that his shoulders were too lax. Slumped more than usual, his eye was just the tiniest bit narrowed, as if scouring for something. And if she looked closely she could see he was holding on to something tightly in his pocket. And it wasn't his porn book. Something was up, and whatever it was, Kakashi-sensei felt the need to discuss it with only his students. Sakura didn't like where this was going. Will you guys be okay here? Karen asked, shocking Sakura from her inner musings. Blinking, Sakura looked over at the girl, noting the unsure way she held herself. Plastering on the biggest smile she could, Sakura nodded. We'll be fine, Karen. Go get some rest. The Uzumaki blinked, eyes full of uncertainty. At long last, she gave a small nod, mouth set into a firm line. Great, Sakura smiled. Karen, still holding her arm, hesitantly got up. Sakura watched as she walked out of the room, casting a final glance at them over her shoulder before sliding the door closed behind her. As soon as the redhead was out of sight, their sensei's demeanor changed like a switch being flipped. Sasuke, he growled, eye narrowing dangerously. The hand in his pocket shot out and something went flying onto Sasuke's bed. Explain yourself. When Sakura saw what it was, her heart stopped. The scroll. The scroll depicting Orochimaru's master plan. The one they forged. The one Kakashi sensei was now questioning them about. Her veins had turned to ice, eyes wide as saucers. What did he know? Unlike Sakura, who was panicking inside, Sasuke managed to keep his cool, face relatively devoid of emotion. Sensei, Sasuke started, trying to look calm but confused. Before he could say any more, Kakashi sensei interrupted. Cut the bullshit, he growled, startling the two. They'd never heard him swear before. At least, not when they were actually genin. He was leaning over Sasuke's bed now, hands curled around the metal bar of the footboard. I know you wrote that, he continued, voice low and dangerous. I've read enough of your reports to recognize your handwriting, even if you did manage to copy it character for character. Sakura noticed Sasuke's finger twitch. Now, I'd like to know how for one, you can copy his handwriting so well without having seen his reports before, and two. He took a deep breath in, hands curling tighter around the metal bar. How the fuck did you know about Orochimaru's plans? Sakura felt her heart jackhammer against her chest, sweat forming on her brow. Her hands were clenching her sheets so hard her knuckles were turning white. Sasuke, while holding a much cooler demeanor, wasn't much better off. His eyes were wider in fear and Sakura could see his Adam's apple bobbing up and down nervously, like he wanted to say something but couldn't find the words. Like the Jonin he was, Kakashi sensei noticed all of this. Look, he started again, standing up straight. I know you three are stronger than most genin. I know you're more mature than you should be. I know you're different. What I just don't get is why. Sakura and Sasuke exchanged a fearful glance. You can't be imposters. No one can replicate the Sharingan, or, he trailed off, eye flicking over to Naruto. And you're still familiar with the village in a way only shinobi raised here would be. So what are you saying? Sakura breathed, genuinely terrified of her sensei for once. The Jonin's lone gray eye narrowed at her. I'm saying, he started. I'm asking, he corrected. Why do you know what you know? And how do you know it? He looked back and forth between the two of them for a moment, as if thinking of how to phrase his next sentence. Depending on your answers, all of this is off the record. But I need to know, are you loyal to Konoha? Sakura immediately shot out of her bed, bare feet hitting the cold tiled floor. Of course we're loyal to Konoha. She cried, outraged. How could you think such a thing? You tell me, was all he replied with. Growling in frustration, Sakura opened her mouth to retort but was overcome by a wave of dizziness. Oh, right, chakra exhaustion. Stumbling slightly, she caught herself on the edge of the bed. A hand reached out to help her, and she was surprised to see Sasuke leaning over to help her. When was the last time he had done that? Blushing slightly from gratitude, she hauled herself back up onto her bed, this time sitting on the edge. The two genin shared a look before an irritated flare of chakra made them look back up at their sensei. Next to her, Sasuke huffed out a sigh of frustration. Look, he started, turning to their sensei. We're loyal to Konoha. I don't know how we can prove it to you, but we don't hold any ill intent towards it. Sakura noted the auspiciously missing, any more, from his sentence. And yet here you are knowing the entire terrorist plan of a rogue S-class ninja, the Jonin pointed out bitterly. So sorry if I can't help but wonder. They were at a loss for an explanation. Really there wasn't any good way to excuse how they knew all that yet hadn't gone to any officials. 
It's what the law stated to do anyway. So off the bat they'd already committed a crime, time travel be damned. Sakura felt herself open her mouth to reply, no words on her tongue, but was saved at the last minute by a voice she hadn't expected at all. Kashi Sne. Sakura froze. Sucking in a breath, she turned to the far bed to see the familiar blue eyes of Kanaha's Jinchuriki cracked open. He was awake. Naruto, she gasped, shocked. How was he awake? She and the doctors had predicted he'd be out for a good week at the minimum. Sure he'd been out for two days after wave, but his chakra exhaustion hadn't been nearly as bad then as it was now. There was no feasible way that he should even be conscious, let alone talking. Behind her, the rest of Team 7 was just as shocked. Kakashi Sensei's eye was blown wide, and Sasuke was frozen in his bed. Ways with the stairs, the blonde asked in a slurred voice. Sakura had no answer for him, instead watching dumbfounded as he pushed himself up some from the bed to lean back on the pillows. You're, awake, was all Sakura could manage. Naruto blinked at her, eyes vacant and glassy. Well, yeah, he mumbled dumbly. I heal fast. No, Sakura insisted, pushing forward. Your chakra the doctors you shouldn't be awake. She exclaimed. It was then as he frowned that Sakura noticed something red on the corner of his mouth. Squinting, she purred closer at it. It was blood, but it couldn't have been his. Sakura gasped. Karen, she breathed. She should have seen it sooner. The exhaustion in her eyes, the way she was hiding her arm, God, how could she have been so stupid? Karen. Kakashi sensei echoed with a frown. Next to her, Sakura could see her sensei's confusion reflected on her blonde teammate's face. Poor guy, he didn't even know his cousin had visited him. Karen, Sakura started. She has a keke jenke that lets her heal people, but, she trailed off, thoughts turning dark. Luckily, Sasuke finished for her. But at the cost of her own vitality. In his bed, Naruto blinked in shock, seeming to come to more awareness. What did she do? He asked in a croaky voice. Sakura just shook her head hard in response. It doesn't matter, she insisted, ignoring the disgust that wrapped itself around her heart. All that matters now is that you're fine. No one seemed convinced, but they didn't comment on it. Thankfully. Unfortunately, Kakashi Sensei dragged the conversation back. I'm glad you're okay, he said honestly. Then his voice hardened. But regardless, he dismissed. I want an explanation. Now. Way's going on. Naruto asked from the side, eyes going back and forth between his team and Sensei. This, Kakashi Sensei replied icily, holding up the scroll he'd tossed onto Sasuke's bed. Almost immediately, all fatigue vanished from his expression, face falling in recognition. Oh, what do you three know about this? Their sensei finally demanded. Silence was the only thing he received. What were they supposed to do, tell him? Oh hey, guess what, we're from the future and have been this whole time. And guess what, we know secrets you don't, and also, the guy who gave you your eye killed Naruto's parents and is still alive, actively plotting to murder everyone. Yeah, not really an option but not telling him wouldn't go well for them either. They were cornered. He'd suspected something was up with them for a while now, so they couldn't just shake it off or dismiss it. But they also couldn't fabricate a whole lie either. He was smart. He would figure it out in an instant. Besides, they hadn't actually lied to him the whole time they'd been with him. Omitted, yes, but never lied. Hell, Naruto literally shouted out, Kagaya, the first time they, met, him. But telling him the truth, who would believe that? Certainly not a normal shinobi, even one with a space-time jutsu sitting in their eye socket. Besides, even if they did, they'd have to back it up with facts. Something that he'd never told them in this timeline that he had in theirs, or another piece of info just as coveted. Wincing in realization, Sakura's eye drifted over to Naruto. They could always tell Kakashi-sensei about Naruto's parents. No, that'd be like open a wound. Too personal. Too painful. Maybe as a last resort though. Well. Her sensei growled, snapping her back to the present. Sakura blinked, turning to face him again. Do you work for Danzo? Another village. What? The pointed question stung like Sanban. Sakura prided herself on being the smartest and most rational member of Team 7. Having trained under Lady Tsunade for three years, and working her way up the ranks until she was the most respected medical ninja in the village was no small feat. She deserved everything she worked so hard for. So, using her intellect, she came to the only conclusion that seemed to make sense. Even if she didn't like it. Gulping, Sakura opened her mouth to answer. You wouldn't believe us, she said. She didn't see any other option. He had to know something. But please just listen. 
On either side of her, her teammates whipped their heads to stare at her, aghast. Sakura. Sasuke hissed. What are you doing? Do you have a better idea? She snapped back. Well no but, exactly, so let me handle this. The Uchiha snapped his mouth shut in shock, but offered no rebuttal. Good. With a sigh, she turned back to their frustrated sensei. Next to her, Sasuke was glaring daggers at her, but thankfully remaining silent. On her other side though, Naruto was staring wide-eyed, as if unable to believe what she was about to do. Gathering herself, Sakura took a deep breath in. This wasn't going to be easy. Sensei, she started, voice wavering just slightly. What you're about to hear won't make sense, but please bear with us. Across from her, her sensei's eye narrowed, gray iris turning icy. Sakura ignored the frantic pounding of her heart and pushed on. We don't work for Danzo, she said, earning a disgusted sneer from Sasuke. And nor do we work for another village. God, this was gonna be hard. Sucking in a deep breath, she steeled herself. It was now or never. The truth is, Naruto gulped loudly next to her. Sasuke's eyes widened. We're from the future. Chapter 35 Kakashi Sensei blinked. And then blinked again. Come again. Yua, Naruto tried, staring wide-eyed at Sakura. She really did that. She really did that. It's true, Sensei, the girl insisted, leaning forward. We can tell you anything. On either side of her, her teammates were staring wide-eyed, unsure what to do. In front of them however, their sensei's eye was narrowed to almost a slit. Do tell, he finally ground out. None of them seemed to know what to say. What on earth should they say? What could they say? Something they shouldn't know that Kakashi sensei did know. Unfortunately a lot of what they knew, he didn't. Like information about the Uchiha massacre, the Akatsuki, Obito, Kegaya, the Fourth War, what could they possibly tell him? You used to be in Anbu, Sakura suddenly piped up. You have the tattoo on your shoulder from it. Kakashi sensei didn't look convinced by her words. Instead raising an eyebrow in a look of annoyance. You could easily have seen it over the past few months. Especially during the wave mission, he countered. They had been in close quarters for that mission, so to imply that they could have seen it when he was asleep or changing wasn't a stretch. Frustrated, Sakura let out a growling huff of air, fists bawling in anger. Naruto took that as permission to go next. Whenever you're late to meetings, he said. It's because you're in front of the memorial stone. Not because of a black cat or some old lady. Quote. Kakashi sensei didn't even seem impressed by that. You three easily could have stopped me, he pointed out with dry bitterness. Easily. Geez. They were getting nowhere with him. Well fine. Sakura suddenly cried, eyes burning with determination. You got your Sharingan from Obito Uchiha, and with Kamui you can suck things into another dimension. This time, their sensei did look shocked. How? He trailed off, eye widening. We all know about what a Mangekio Sharingan is, sensei, Sasuke interjected, taking the man's attention away from his teammate. Well all know because, well. He closed his eyes for a brief moment, taking a small steadying breathe in. Then his eyes flew open, no longer charcoal black. Instead they were Mangekio red. Inverted lotus staring directly at their sensei. Naruto heard Kakashi sensei suck in a sharp breath. That's not, possible, the Jonin breathed. Letting his Sharingan fade away, Sasuke spoke up with, it is possible. Like Sakura said, we're not actually 12. And we all know you have one as well, Sakura added on. I don't know how, she continued, ignoring his look of shock. But somehow your friend gave it to you and since then you unlocked the Mangekio. Which, frankly, she started to trail off. I'm a little nervous as to how. Kakashi sensei didn't move, just stared at them. Naruto could practically see the cogs turning in his mind. Did he believe them yet? Something akin to hope swelled in Naruto's chest. Kakashi sensei might just believe them now. They weren't alone anymore. You could have asked someone, was their sensei's reply. His voice was shaky and faint, but it had conviction. Guy, or Anko, or, he trailed off, staring blankly at his students. Perhaps bringing up his Mangekio wasn't the best idea. They all knew how to get one after all, so whatever was going through Kakashi sensei's head must not have been pleasant. I'm sorry sensei, Sakura said in a smaller, more careful voice. But it's true, we really are from the future. Their sensei didn't seem to acknowledge her words, staring vacantly into the empty air instead. His gray eye was distant, wider than normal. For a moment, Naruto was afraid he was going to hyperventilate like he had that one time. But instead, the Jonin looked back up at them, a dangerously cold look in his eye. That is not possible, he growled. Now stop giving me excuses and tell me the truth. God damn. 
What was it going to take for him to believe them? Out of the corner of his eye, Naruto spotted Sakura looking at him. She was giving him a meaningful look, her green eyes trying to say something. Naruto frowned questioningly. What was it? Then he understood when she mouthed one word. Parents. Naruto blinked. Oh, are you sure? He whispered. She gave a curt nod back. It was their trump card, but, Naruto didn't want to bring up those awful memories for his sensei. He knew his dad was Kakashi sensei's teacher, and that he must have at least known his mom. And they'd already mentioned Obito and his Mangekio, so the Jonin must be having a real tough time right now. But he didn't really have another option. Well, this was going to be fun. Stealing himself, Naruto sucked in a deep breath, preparing himself for what was to come. God, he really didn't want to do this to the man. Looking up at his sensei, he said with hard conviction, I know who my parents are. That stopped the man dead. Quote dot dot dot. What did you just say? Kakashi sensei was staring at him with a wide eye, face considerably paler than normal. All the frustration and anger had faded away from his expression, leaving only blank horror. I said, Naruto replied shakily. I know who my parents are. He didn't wait for a signal to continue, knowing he wouldn't get one. Kashina Uzumaki and Minato Namikaze. The fourth Hokage. Kakashi sensei was frozen. Eye wide and masked face pale as snow. Naruto watched the man's fingers twitch sporadically, seeming as though he was looking to grab something. How do you, who told you, Kakashi sensei finally breathed. His voice was audibly shaking, betraying just how not put together he was. They told me themselves, you know, he answered. When Kurama the Kayubi went berserk, the seal almost broke. But like, my dad had sealed some of his chakra away so that he could fix it, he went on to say, ignoring Kakashi sensei's befuddled expression. Same with my mom. When I tried to steal the QB's chakra, she helped me do it, and she told me how she and dad met and, his voice was growing wet with tears, throat starting to ache. His eyes fell to his hands, unable to meet anyone else's. She told me about the day I was born. That her seal was weakened because of the pregnancy, and somehow the man with the mask knew and, he ripped the Kayubi out of her and set it on the village. He didn't notice it because he was looking down, but Kakashi sensei's expression morphed from confused shock to guilt and horror. Sasuke noticed though, and narrowed his eyes suspiciously. And I know dad was your sensei. And I know you tried to perfect his Rasengan but instead made the Chidori. Kakashi sensei's eye widened again. And I know why he sealed the Kayubi in me. And that he and mom died protecting me. Tears started sliding down his face. Absently, he swiped them away with his good arm, his right still in its cast. There was a stiff silence in the room after that. Nobody knew quiet what to say, or if they should even say anything at all. Kakashi sensei was frozen in place, eyes staring vacantly into the space between him and his blonde student. Sakura was watching her friend and sensei hesitantly, wondering if she should do something, while Sasuke was growing more and more uncomfortable the longer the silence stretched out. Finally, their sensei broke the silence. You can't, that's not possible. Someone must have told you, even to Naruto he didn't sound convinced, his faint voice giving him away. No one but the Hokage and I knew that about her seal. And neither would have told you went unsaid. Do you believe us now? Naruto asked quietly. Their sensei could only stare at them in silence, unable to speak. Biting her lip, Sakura sat up, insistent look in her eyes. It's true, she insisted, there was a war. Madara Uchiha was trying to bring back the Jubi so he could put the whole world in a genjutsu, but he needed all the biju to do it. Which meant getting the Kayubi from Naruto. But really some goddess named Kagaya was pulling the strings so we had to seal her away. Before we could do it though, we were shot back in time, she explained. We still don't know how. Madara's dead, Kakashi sensei said absently. Five years from now he'll be reanimated by the masked man who set the Kayubi loose, Naruto countered. He's his underling. It was at this point it looked like they were losing Kakashi sensei, watching as the man became more and more overwhelmed by everything they said. Then, without warning, he gave them all one last look before disappearing in a violent storm of leaves. And he was gone. Time travel. Time travel. What the fuck? Kakashi stood on top of a roof somewhere in Konoha, eyes staring vacantly over the village. No one else could have known about Kushina's seal weakening. Only he and the Hokage did. Minato sensei too, when he was alive. No one knew she was the Jinchuriki before Naruto either, save for the aforementioned two. So there was no way Naruto could have known that. Except he did. As well as so much more. They might even know stuff that he doesn't. Just what were his students? 
Itching to move around, Kakashi hopped off the roof and onto another, starting to move towards the only place he went when he needed to think, the memorial stone. His head was spinning by the time he made it there, whirling with all the questions he couldn't seem to properly form. How could they be from the future? What jutsu could have done that? Why did Naruto go berserk? How did they know about his mangekyo? How did Sasuke have his mangekyo? His thoughts stopped short there, replaced with a sickening feeling of dread. Who did he kill to get his mangekyo? Suddenly he had the urge to vomit. Tearing off his mask, he sped to the bushes and puked out whatever what in his stomach onto the ground. What mostly came out was stomach acid though, which burned his throat and mouth. Disgusting. Spitting what was left in his mouth out, he pulled his mask back on and straightened up. If his right hand shook while he did so, well, no one was around to see. Walking back to the memorial stone, he shoved the thought of Sasuke out of his head, compartmentalizing it for later. Instead, he focused back on everything his students had said and exhibited, and how it correlated with their claim of time travel. Kakashi hated to admit it, but everything about them made sense. In a weird, convoluted way of course. But still, he had to admit, everything about them all pointed to their insane explanation. They were all so mature. Their eyes looked like those of seasoned Chunin, if not Jonin. Their teamwork was impeccable, their knowledge of practical field work higher than any other kid their age should be. They didn't even teach tree climbing in the academy for crying out loud. Then his thoughts turned to what they could do. No genin should be able to have full mastery over an elemental affinity, let alone multiple. Kakashi of course was an exception, and possibly Sasuke, as he was both rookie of the year and heir to the Uchiha clan. What was left of it anyway? But a civilian-born girl like Sakura to be able to do so as well. Unlikely. And then there was Sasuke with his fully formed Sharingan. Kakashi wasn't an Uchiha, but surely that must be weird. Sakura's immense strength and precise chakra control. And from a civilian girl no less. He should have been far more suspicious of that. And then Naruto. The boy had seemed surprised by his Keke Genke, but everything else about him, he knew the Rasengan. In no way should he know that Jutsu. His father has been dead for almost 13 years, Jiraiya had never met him, and well, Kakashi just didn't feel like doing it. Too many memories to unpack there. Plus it was an A-rank Jutsu, and they were supposed to be Genin. Kakashi really should have looked underneath the underneath with these kids. But he hadn't. Maybe it was because he didn't have a frame of reference for what a normal Genin team during peacetime looked like. Maybe it's because he had never really been a kid himself. Or maybe it's because I didn't want to see it, a voice in the back of his mind whispered. Kakashi closed his eye with a sigh, shoulders drooping. Maybe it was that. Those blasted genin had wormed their way into his heart and he'd clung on tight, ignoring everything that was telling him that something was off. He hadn't wanted to lose his team again. Couldn't lose his team again. And as such he'd blinded himself to all the facts. His genin were 17 and had gone through a war. And he'd been having them run evasion drills. How had he not noticed? The look in their eyes, it was the same one he saw in the mirror every day. And the same one he saw in all his friends who had fought with him. What a failure of a Jonin he was. Minato sensei, he sighed, staring at the memorial stone. What would you have done? As usual, he got no response. He never did. Chapter 36 Orange sunlight filtered through the windows as Sakura and Sasuke signed their release forms from the hospital. Sometime afternoon a nurse had come in with a doctor and they'd informed them they were healthy enough to be released, with strict instructions to get plenty of rest. Naruto though had to stay for observation. His arm was still broken and he was only suffering from minor chakra exhaustion. Something that wouldn't really bother him, but considering what he went through, it made sense the hospital wanted to keep an eye on him. It had been late afternoon when Team 7 realized their sensei wasn't coming back anytime soon. They didn't hold it against him though. They'd just dumped a lot on the poor unsuspecting man. But still, knowing what he was thinking or doing would have been nice. They just hoped he didn't go straight to the Hokage. Although, if he had, they were pretty sure they'd be hanging out with T and I right about now. But no such thing happened, and eventually night fell and Naruto was left alone in the hospital room, and guards just outside the door. Sorry, Naruto, Sakura had sighed as she'd put her ruined shirt on. The hospital had kept all their salvageable clothes when they'd been brought in. This included Sakura's battered shirt, skirt, and pants, as well as Sasuke's ensemble. Only Naruto's coat and pants had been salvaged, but he knew that going in. I'd visit you tomorrow but, she continued helplessly. But your parents, Naruto finished for her. 
I get it. He tried to offer her a smile. Somehow he didn't think it convinced her. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I heal fast, remember? She smiled softly at that, memories of all the times he'd gotten injured probably playing through her head. Yeah, I know. Oi, Sakura, you coming or not? Sasuke had suddenly called from the door. An Anbu guard was holding it open for him, waiting for Sakura to join them so he could escort them out. Yeah, yeah, she'd waved back. Turning back to Naruto, she smiled again. See you soon, dummy. Naruto smiled at the memory. The sound of the door sliding open dragged him from his thoughts. When he looked over, he was surprised to see Karen standing in the doorway with one of the Anbu guards behind her. He watched as she nodded timidly to the guard before walking into the room. They told me you were awake, she started. I'm sorry I wasn't here for you. Shifting into a sitting up position, Naruto just smiled. Nah, you're good, he said. Sakura said you needed some rest. The redhead attempted a smile, sitting down on the bed next to him. Across the room, the Anbu who'd brought her in left the room, closing the door behind him. The other Anbu who'd been stationed in the room stayed put. Porcelain mask devoid of emotion as always. Doing his best to ignore the Anbu, cuz, weird, Naruto turned back to his cousin. I know what you did for me, he started softly. Karen's eyes widened for a brief moment before replying. What do you uh, what do you mean? Trying to be as careful as possible, Naruto grasped her wrist and held her arm out. Pushing her sleeve up, he exposed the freshly wrapped bite mark, spots of blood speckling the gauze. Karen's shoulders slumped. Oh, she said. Then, with a defeated sigh, she asked, how did you know? Sakura figured it out, he answered honestly, not offering any further explanation. This seemed to be enough for Karen, eyes falling towards her lap in guilt. She stayed like that for a long moment. I didn't want to lose my family again, she finally whispered. Naruto felt something grip his heart upon hearing her words. He watched as her welling tears finally slid down her cheeks. She made no move to get rid of them. I'm sorry, he said hoarsely. I didn't mean to make you worry. It's fine, she sniffed. No one ever does. Naruto grimaced at that. She'd been through a lot. And if he didn't change things she would go through a lot more. The image of her bleeding out on a broken bridge invaded his mind. Blood had been pouring from her mouth. Only Sakura's knowledge and medical skills managing to save her. He didn't want that for this Karen. Never. Hey, he started, reaching out to hold her hand. Blinking, she looked up at him in confusion. I'm okay now you know. But, if you're gonna stay with me, there's only one thing I want you to promise me. Karen gulped nervously. Uh, sure. What it is. Naruto smiled. Don't hurt yourself to make others feel better. A smile smile formed on Karen's face, just reaching her eyes. A quick swipe of her sleeves cleared her eyes of tears. I think I can do that, she said. After Payne's attack on Konoha, Sakura thought she'd seen how clingy her parents could be. She was sorely wrong. As soon as she'd entered the hospital lobby after being escorted out by an Anbu, she'd been tackled in a hug that she was sure would have broken something. Immediately her parents started fussing over her, checking every inch to make sure she was really and truly alright. She was aware of Sasuke watching the whole thing go down off to the side. He looked uncomfortable. Right, she realized guiltily. He didn't have parents to fuss over him. Mom, Dad, I'm fine, she said, trying to pry herself away from their smothering. It didn't help her case that she was wearing the same clothes she had been in the forest of death. Or that she still had a few bandages on. Honey, you were attacked by a Sanin. Her mom gushed. It's a miracle you're alive. Casting an apologetic glance over to Sasuke, Sakura tried again with her parents. Mom, I'm okay. See, she held out her arms for affect. Then, putting her hands on her hips, added, come on, I'm stronger than you think. They didn't look at all convinced, but they gave her sympathetic smiles anyway. The kind parents gave when they said they believed you but really didn't. Whatever. Sakura didn't need reassurance or sympathy or whatever. She was a seasoned shinobi. But she would like to get out of the hospital where her parents were starting to make a scene. So um, she tried again. Can we go home now? I'm really tired. Oh, of course. Her dad cried. I'll make you whatever you want for dinner. You must be exhausted. Before she could agree, her parents started ushering her out of the hospital. Halfway to the door, she looked over her shoulder to where Sasuke was still standing. He looked so alone, standing in the middle of the bustling lobby with no one to pick him up. He was probably going to head back to his apartment and make dinner by himself, and probably burn it cause they were both still a bit out of it. 
It wasn't fair. Hey mom, she asked, stopping in the middle of the hallway. Her parents turned back to her, confused. Could we let Sasuke come as well? I don't want him to be home alone while he recovers. The look her mom gave her said she didn't believe her, probably remembering when Sakura was absolutely crazy about the Uchiha. Rolling her eyes, Sakura dismissed the thought. It's not like that, mom, she sighed. It's just, she looked back over her shoulder at the teen preteen, still covered in bandages and wearing his burned clothes. He shouldn't have to be alone right now. Sakura didn't see our parents' reactions, but she was fairly sure they were sympathetic. After a moment of quiet debate between the two, Sakura was ushered off back to her teammate to invite him to dinner. She wasted no time. Hey Sasuke, she said as she walked up. Be casual. Be casual. Why are you still here? I have to fill out some forms to get my sword back, he replied easily. What are you still doing here? It wasn't accusatory, but it came across that way. Huffing out a frustrated sigh, Sakura said, I'm inviting you to come have dinner with my parents. As a date, he asked in confusion. No, dipshit. She practically cried. As a medical ninja, I don't want you being on your own after just being released from the hospital. Besides, I doubt you'd actually take it easy like the staff told us to, she ranted. I can't make sure you're following their orders if I'm cooped up in my house. Now are you coming to dinner or not? Sasuke looked baffled for a moment before pulling himself together and shrugging. Sure, why not? Geez, was it really that hard to show emotions? All right, you know where my house is. He nodded. All right, she said as she started to turn back to her parents. And you better show up. I'll have no patient of mine neglecting his health. I'm not your patient, she heard him mutter. She just rolled her eyes, already headed back towards her parents. It had already gotten dark by the time Sasuke had arrived. Sakura had usured him in immediately and had plopped him down at the table, shoving chopsticks into his hands. Her father had greeted him with an exuberant smile while her mother had served him up a bowl of Donbury. Suffice to say, Sasuke was very surprised by all the excitement happening around him. Her father's jokes weren't helping. After an interesting dinner, and yummy, on her part, dessert of Anmitsu, Sakura somehow convinced Sasuke to stay the night. Her father lent him some pajamas, and they dug out an extra blanket for him and set up a makeshift bed on the couch. Before her parents ushered them off to bed doctor's orders. Before they went to their separate rooms though, Sakura grabbed Sasuke's arm and dragged him off to the hall. We have to talk about Kakashi-sensei, she hissed, hoping her parents couldn't hear them. What about him? He hissed back. Well, what if he rats us out to the Hokage? She shot back. And even so, we still have to come up with a fake report of what happened. Sasuke chewed his lip for a moment, contemplating what she'd just said. After a moment, he bit out, fine. After your parents go to bed, though. Yeah, yeah, she waved him off. Now go to your couch. I'll come back later. With a huff, he trudged off to the couch, making him look more like a 12-year-old rather than the 17-year-old he really was. Sakura smiled to herself at the sight. Uchiha's. Without waiting to hear if he'd made it to the living room, she headed off to bed, head already spinning with plans on how to overcome their predicament. It was well past midnight when Sakura snuck out of her room. Across the hall she could hear her parents softly snoring, indicating that they were fast asleep. Making sure to be as silent as possible, she tiptoed out into the hall and shut her door behind her. Out in the living room Sasuke has sitting up on the couch, some book in hand and blanket draped over his lap. The lamp on the end table next to him was on, throwing yellow light over the room. Sasuke, she hissed, grabbing his attention. He looked up from his book, shutting it immediately upon seeing her in the doorway. All right, he sighed, sitting up. Let's get this over with. Rolling her eyes, Sakura made her way over to the couch, plopping down next to the Uchiha. But instead of getting right to it, Sakura's face fell, eyes drifting away. We should have Naruto here, she lamented, staring at an empty spot on the couch, as if expecting their blonde teammate to be sitting there. Well he's not, Sasuke replied, earning him a dirty look from Sakura. But we still have to do this. I know, she sighed, somewhat frustrated. Anyways, what are we going to do? About Kakashi or about our report? Sakura shrugged helplessly. Both. Well, Sasuke started. We can't really do anything about him right now. We're on house arrest, remember? Sakura just rolled her eyes again. Technically it's bed rest, but sure, whatever helps you sleep at night. It was the Uchiha's turn to roll his eyes. They fell into a short silence after that. Neither of them really knew what to say next, just that they had to speak. 
Sakura was the first to break it. Do you think he believes us? She asked quietly. She couldn't keep the uncertainty out of her voice despite her best attempt. Most likely, Sasuke replied. Why else would he disappear on us like that? Sakura shrugged, partly agreeing with him. The only question now is what is he going to do? She said. If he goes to the Hokage we're screwed. Cause then we'll be dragged to T&I and well, she paused, remembering all the shit they'd been through and done in the last five years. All the village secrets they shouldn't know, and crimes they let Sasuke get away with. It wouldn't be pretty. Next to her, Sasuke hummed in agreement. We can't really do anything about it right now, he mused, looking out the window into the night. We're basically on house arrest. Grimacing, Sakura nodded. So, assuming he doesn't rat us out, she started. What should our report say? We fought a Sanin and came out alive, we have to come up with a feasible story that also counteracts whatever he might say. HN, Sasuke agreed. Something not too complicated. Otherwise it'd look suspicious. A slow smile spread across Sakura's face, green eyes shining in the dark. I think I can work with that. Chapter 37. Two days later found Kakashi still standing in front of the memorial stone. He had gone home to sleep, of course. But every waking moment he found himself gravitating towards the damned rock. He didn't know what to think, so he came here. Hey Minato sensei Kashina-san, Obito, he greeted. I know I've been here a lot for the past few days but, he looked down at his shoes. Sensei, Kashina, your son. He's done something unimaginable. Hell, I'm still having a hard time wrapping my head around it. He paused, letting out a long breath before continuing. I don't know what to do with him. Or any of them for that matter. They say they're from the future, they know things they shouldn't, I can't find any reason not to believe them. The warm summer breeze rustled through the forest around him. If he tried, he could pretend for a moment that it was his dead sensei and friends giving him reassurance. As it was though, he was an ex-Anbu commander and a Jonin sensei. He didn't believe in such nonsense. Anyway, he continued, they said they were releasing Naruto today, so I have to bring them all to Lord Hokage so they can finally give their report. Which was due a week ago. Kakashi heard himself let out a dry laugh. Guess that makes me like you, Obito. Late with everything. Again, the only response he got was the wind. Sighing in defeat, Kakashi let his chin drop to his chest. He was getting nowhere with this. His students needed help and here he was talking to a stone. He still wasn't sure what to do with them though. Should he go to the Hokage with it, or let them keep their cover? On the one hand it would make his life simpler and he wouldn't have to deal with any more headaches. On the other hand they would probably be thrown straight into prison for not coming forward sooner and never let out of sight again. Decisions, decisions. Making up his mind, Kakashi straightened up and shoved his hands in his pockets. He had some genin to pick up. When Kakashi sensei came to pick him up from the hospital, Naruto wasn't really sure what to expect. Anger, frustration, maybe even distant wasn't one of them. Come on, his sensei said as soon as Naruto finished signing the release papers. We have to drop Karen off at your apartment before picking Sakura and Sasuke up. Oh, right. He had to give his report to the Hokage today. Sakura and Sasuke had probably already figured something out for that. Unfortunately he hadn't been around to hear it. Maybe they could squeeze it in on the way to the tower. Okay, Naruto nodded. Turning to his cousin, he asked, you okay with that? Karen offered a nod back. Sure. The three left the hospital in uncomfortable silence. Karen knew something had happened between the team and their sensei, but didn't know what. Naruto hadn't offered an explanation, so she hadn't badgered him for one. Naruto knew this and was grateful. He didn't know how he would have explained it to her. After dropping her off at his apartment which was looking suspiciously cleaner they continued on to Sasuke's place. They didn't expect it to be empty. Maybe he's training. Naruto offered weakly. Kakashi sensei just snorted. He's on bed rest. He's not supposed to even leave the house. Naruto didn't know what to say to that. Instead, he gave a half-hearted shrug, which didn't really work because of the sling and cast still on his arm. Sighing, Kakashi sensei backed away from the door and started heading down the hall. Come on, we should at least get Sakura. Sighing, Naruto trotted after him. Why did his legs have to be so short? After almost 10 minutes of walking, jogging on Naruto's part, the duo arrived at Sakura's house. Not wasting any time, Kakashi sensei wrapped his knuckle on the door before stepping back to wait. What the two of them weren't expecting was for a certain Uchiha to open to the door instead. Standing in the doorway was none other than Sasuke Uchiha himself. 
He was wearing a large sleep shirt and rubbing a towel through still wet hair. Had he showered here? Uh, Sasuke. Naruto puzzled. What are you doing here? Doing where? Was his deadpan response. Lucky for him he was saved by Sakura's mom. Sasuke dear, who is it? The woman asked, rounding the corner. Upon seeing the two in the doorway, she nodded in understanding. Sakura, honey, she called into the house. Your sensei's here to pick you up. All right mom, they heard her respond. Turning back to the Uchiha, Sakura's mom said, your clothes should be dry. Go on and get ready too. In the doorway, Kakashi sensei and Naruto watched in stunned silence as Sasuke listened to an adult and went back into the house to get changed. What the hell? Five minutes later when Sakura and Sasuke were pulling their sandals on, Sakura asked, what's up with you two? Neither decided to comment. The four-man group had been walking for five minutes in uncomfortable silence when Kakashi sensei finally snapped. Okay, he hissed, dragging them in an alley. We don't have a lot of time because Lord Third is expecting us, so let's make this quick. Sakura frowned up at him. Sensei, look, I need us all to be on the same page before we all go up the tower. He pointed in the direction of the Hokage's tower. I need to know everything you can tell me about your little mishap so I can help cover for you. Wait, you'll cover for us, Naruto was quickly shushed by a hand being slapped over his mouth. Yes, their sensei hissed, gloved hand still held over the blonde's mouth. But I need to know everything you can possibly tell me so I know this is the right decision. And what if you decide it isn't? Sasuke challenged. Why should we tell you anything? Apparently that was the wrong thing to say, as their sensei's lone eye narrowed dangerously. In a low voice, he replied, because currently I am the only thing standing between you three, and our lovely T and I force. Not to mention prison, based on how many rules I'm assuming you've broken. So in my educated opinion, I suggest you cooperate with me. Behind his hand, Naruto gulped nervously. The three genin all exchanged nervous glances, seeming to be having a silent debate. A stern look from Sasuke though had them come to a consensus. We'll tell you, Sasuke announced. Wasn't really an option. Letting out a weary sigh, Sakura removed their sensei's hand from Naruto's mouth and started speaking. We didn't mean to come back here. It was a fluke, she explained. We were fighting someone stronger than anything you could imagine. Someone horrible. We were about to beat her when suddenly we were shot back in time. It wasn't our fault, I swear. In front of them, their sensei rose a disbelieving eyebrow. How could someone possibly be so strong? He challenged. You can if you're the Jubi's Jinchuriki, Sasuke announced. That got their sensei's attention. Narrowing his eye, he looked the three of them over with newfound scrutiny. You have five minutes, he finally announced. Go. So to get this straight, their sensei started, a group called the Akatsuki was stealing biju so as to put the whole world in a genjutsu, but instead it just brought a chakra goddess back. The three genin in front of him nodded. And then she tried to steal everyone's chakra, he continued. The three nodded again. So you three fought her and then, got shot back here, yes, Sasuke finished. Letting out a heavy sigh, Kakashi sensei dropped his head into his hand. Jeez, you three. Growling in frustration, Naruto stepped forward towards their sensei. Look, it's not like we meant to travel back in time, he cried. We were winning. So why did you decide to change things? Kakashi sensei shot back, because I'm not letting my friends die for me again. Wouldn't you do the same? That made him freeze. Sakura, Sasuke, and Naruto watched as their sensei's eye glazed over, not seeming to see them. For a moment, Sakura was afraid he was going to have a panic attack again. But at the last moment he snapped himself out of it, eye hardening and shoulders squared. Okay, he finally said. I'll back you up. The three let out a unanimous sigh. But afterwards, he continued, you're going to explain everything to me. The three genin of Team 7 all exchanged a quick glance. Yes, they would tell. But not everything. Not Obito. Ah, Kakashi, the third said as their team entered the Hokage's office. Good of you to finally show up. The sarcasm was not lost to them. Behind him stood the two crones who supposedly aided him, as well as Shikamaru's dad, the Jonin commander. Sorry. He said. Naruto was still tired, so we had to go extra slow for him. The boy in question shot an angry look up at the Jonin, which went ignored. It didn't seem to convince anyone else either, but the Hokage let it slide regardless. As you're aware, Kakashi, your team has yet to give their report on what happened in training ground 44. As Kitetsu was only there for part of it, we still have yet to learn what all happened. Didn't the snake bastard say anything? Naruto piped up in confusion. 
Sadly, no, Hiruzen replied. He refuses to speak no matter what we do. Unbeknownst to the higher-ups in the room, all three time travelers felt an instant wave of relief wash over them. Good. At least they didn't have to contend with another recount of events. Now, the Hokage said, if you would start from the beginning. Taking a breath, the three began. We had been setting traps to catch other teams when he showed up, Sakura started. Her voice was level and calm, exactly how a shinobi was expected to deliver reports. He attacked us with a powerful wind jutsu. We tried to run away but he chased us, triggering some traps in the process. They didn't hold him, Sasuke added on. Barely even slowed him down. The Hokage nodded along. As expected of a Sanin, he sighed. Then, realizing running wasn't an option, we tried our best to hold our ground, Sakura continued. But then he summoned a giant snake, and well, she trailed off, eyes dropping toward the floor. She was trying her best to appear as though she was remembering something awful. Something a normal 12-year-old wouldn't want to talk about. They'd barely had time to fill Naruto in on the plan, but luckily he remembered that this was where he came in. After he summoned the snake, Naruto picked up. His voice wavered just the right amount to sound like he felt guilty. I, um, my chakra, it, it turned orange, Sasuke finished. Every face in the room paled. The office seemed to grow colder as well, the teens noticed. Clearly even after nearly 13 years any mention of the fox was despised. Ignoring the obvious shift in the room, Naruto spoke up again. I don't really remember what I did, he lied. But I know I was fighting Orochimaru. And then he hit me with something and the orange chakra went away. Then I broke my arm. He held up his arm for emphasis. Sakura and I stayed back while they fought, Sasuke added on. Once Naruto broke his arm though and lost the cloak, we knew we had to think quick. And what did you do, Hiruzen asked. Sakura gulped Fo nervously and exchanged a glance with Sasuke. We, uh, we knew that if we opened the scroll it had summoned a proctor, she admitted. Then, to avoid suspicion, added, we saw it happen to another group. The elders in the room weren't too pleased by her last comment, but the rest of it they didn't seem to question. It was too soon to tell, but all four of them started to feel as though they'd pulled it off. Finally, turning to their sensei, the Hokage asked, and all of this lines up with what they've told you. Kakashi sensei didn't even hesitate before nodding. Good, the man sighed. All right then, your team can go now, Kakashi. And Naruto. The boy froze, I want to see you later to discuss that orange chakra. Gulping nervously, Naruto nodded. All right then, you are dismissed. After offering respectful bows, the four were ushered out of the office so the higher-ups could talk. As soon as the door was shut behind them, their sensei gave them all a leveling stare. My house, he announced. Now, they didn't argue. Chapter 38 Kakashi's apartment was fair-sized for a single adult living alone. It had a bed, a desk, a small table, and a kitchenette. Everything a person needed to live well. For three teenagers and their sensei though, it was a little cramped. We couldn't have done this at my apartment. Naruto whined as they crossed the threshold. As shitty as his place was, at least it had more space. No, Kakashi sensei immediately shot down. You don't have privacy seals. Naruto cursed himself for not even considering that. Right, he tried instead. I knew that. He did not know that. You three, sit down, Kakashi sensei ordered, pointing to his kitchen table. They complied while he started to busy himself in the kitchen, pulling out an electric kettle and four cups. The three of them sat in silence as they watched their sensei angrily make tea. Naruto didn't even know someone could do that. Yet here they were. Well, maybe angry wasn't the right word. Stressed. Could someone even doing something stressfully? Shaking himself of the thought, Naruto focused back on their sensei, who was now done with the preparations. The few minutes it took to steep the tea were one of the most awkward ones of Naruto's life. Once the cups of matcha were placed in front of them, their sensei finally sat down. All right, he said, start. Uh, where do you want us to start? Sakura asked. Well, for starters, Kakashi sensei replied. First of all, how old are you? He asked. 17, they answered in unison. Well, Sakura added, Naruto's still 16. Hey, the blonde cried. It was after midnight. I'm 17. Time space stops mattering once you enter another dimension, Sakura argued. Ergo, you're not 17. It was definitely after midnight when she shot us into that lava realm, he argued. Guys, Sasuke interrupted. Focus. Across the table, a certain Jonan was trying his best to comprehend the conversation that had just been had in front of him. 
He wasn't successful, right? Sorry, Sakura mumbled, dropping it. Meanwhile Naruto was sending them both filthy looks. Anyways, Kakashi-sensei started again. How about you start from the beginning? Naruto frowned. The beginning. You already vaguely explained how you got here, he elaborated. But I want to know what led up to that, and what has to be fixed. That's a little complicated, sensei, Naruto bemoaned. Kakashi-sensei just shrugged, crossing his arms nonchalant. I have all day. Naruto let out a huff of air. All right fine, he sighed. But you're probably gonna wanna make some more tea. This'll take a while. Once they were done, the kitchen was silent. In front of them, Kakashi-sensei leaned against his counter with a pensive expression. His visible eyes seemed to give nothing away, staring blankly off into space. He was taking it all in, they knew. But they wished they knew what he was thinking. They had started by telling him about the war and what he already knew. They'd told him about Kagaya and where she'd come from, what she'd been planning to do. They explained how Sasuke with his Mangekio, Naruto with Kurama, Sakura with her Byakugo, and Kakashi with his Kamui had managed to beat Kagaya before being blasted back here. Then they'd explained what had originally happened. They started with the wave mission. It had been their first real mission. The one that had shaped who they were as shinobi. And then they went on. The Chunin exams, Orochimaru, Tsunade, Itachi, the Akatsuki. They explained how the organization had been after Jinchuriki, extracting their biju in the hopes of reforming the jubi. But when they'd gotten to Obito, Madara, they'd paused. They couldn't tell him. Not now. This wasn't the Kakashi sensei who had lost a student. Not the one who'd had to fight tooth and nail to keep his team together. Not the one who they'd fought side by side with on the battlefield. He hadn't seen Konoha destroyed, or witnessed a mass resurrection by the very man who killed him. No. This was their 26-year-old, barely knows what he's doing, ex-Anbu commander, sensei who'd been thrust into a situation far above his peril. This wasn't the man who could know that the owner of his Sharingan was still out there. Nor that said owner had been the cause of the Kayubi attack nearly 13 years ago. The Kakashi Hataki of now didn't need to know what their Kakashi knew. Not yet anyways. They hadn't told him about Sasuke leaving the village or how he'd killed Danzo, either. They felt that was better left out. Their poor sensei had already had enough dumped on him today. Adding a possible traitor to the list definitely wouldn't help. So there they sat. Three time travelers waiting on their sensei to break the silence. Empty cups of tea sat in front of all of them, having all been drunken up over the course of the talk. Outside the sound of Kanaha's nightlife was picking up, but only as a distance buzzing in their ears. Finally, their sensei did move, breaking the awful silence. So, he began. He looked unsure of himself. You all have been through a lot, he finally managed. Yes, Sakura replied, voice hoarse from emotion. Talking about everything hadn't been easy on them. And what do you want to do about it? He asked. We want to stop it, Naruto announced. We want to save our friends and make sure none of that ever happens again. In front of them, Kakashi Sensei's lone gray eye scrutinized the three. They could see the wheels turning in his head. They watched as he chewed over their words, calculative look hanging about him. He seemed to be making a decision. Good, he finally said before straightening up. Then let's get started. Team 7 smiled. It was so easy not to believe what was going to happen from the safety of a house. With tea in your hands and the sound of bustling life outside the window. When your heart was full and everything right with the world. Like the worst that tomorrow would bring was a scraped knee or a can I cut. It was easy to believe nothing could go wrong when everything around you told you it wouldn't. But Kakashi knew better. War was coming. Not necessarily soon, but it was coming. His team was proof of that. Immediately though was the attack against Konoha that Orochimaru would have headed. Except that was no longer a problem seeing as he was in prison. But there were still Oto and Suna Ninja out there waiting for their orders. Namely, the Kazekage's children. And out of those three, Gara of the Sand. Or rather, the Aikibi Jinchuriki. According to his team, Gara became a competent cage, and friend to Naruto later on. Now though he was a bloodthirsty monster who wouldn't blink twice at killing his own siblings. Ma, Kakashi sighed, sagging against the railing of his balcony. What a mess you three dragged me into. The words weren't addressed to anyone, as his team had all gone home over an hour ago. But he felt it still needed saying. And what a mess he would have to clean up. Well, he would help them clean up, seeing as they had done all of the work prior to now. But honestly, did they really think they could stop a war single-handedly? Hell, even with his help he doubted they'd succeed. They'd needed more, not just the four of them. 
but they couldn't go to Hirazan. Not after everything he'd just learned. He didn't even know if he could trust the man, knowing that he was partly to blame for the Uchiha massacre. Kakashi shook his head, dropping it down to his chest. And to think, Itachi had been innocent the whole time. Just how much are you hiding, Hirazan? He breathed. They needed someone powerful on their side. But not him. Someone better. If only Minato Sensei were still alive. With one last sigh, Kakashi took in the sight of Kanaha's nightlife before heading back inside, knowing he wouldn't get a wink of sleep that night. Since they had one more day of being on bedrest, Sasuke was forced to come back to Sakura's house for the night. Her parents didn't seem to mind in the least, happy to have their special guest back over for one more night. Sakura's mom made yakisoba for dinner and her dad kept making stupid jokes. Afterwards he and Sakura had been ushered to bed, but sometime later Sakura had snuck out to the living room and laid her futon down next to his makeshift bed on the couch, seeming intent on staying with him for the night. Sasuke wasn't about to complain though. After the day they'd had, he wasn't about to fault her for her actions. Telling Kakashi hadn't been easy. For any of them. The two were silent for a long time before Sakura suddenly spoke up. Sasuke. Sakura asked. Her voice was barely above a whisper, hushed by the heavy atmosphere around them. Yeah. He whispered back. A short silence stretched between the two before his teammate responded. I was thinking, she said. If we had managed to beat Kagaya and get back to our own dimension, would you have stayed? As Sasuke stared up at the dark ceiling of Sakura's house, he realized he didn't know how to answer that. Yes, he was ready to say, but something stopped him. He hated to admit it now, but part of him back then had still wanted vengeance on the leaf. He'd wanted reform, no matter how he did it. No matter who he had to kill. And that meant no Team 7. Before he could say as much, Sakura spoke up. It's okay, she sighed forlornly. I get it, I do. What Konoha did to Itachi, it's unspeakable. I understand you wanting revenge. No, he jumped up. That's not it. In the dark, he managed to see Sakura's confused gaze find his. I mean, he continued. Yes I wanted revenge, but, but what? Part of him still wanted revenge. But the other half just wanted his family. And maybe he was starting to realize that that family wasn't just made up of Uchiha anymore. But. Sakura echoed. But, he trailed off, unsure how to continue. Yes I'm mad at Konoha. I'm mad at Danzo. I'll still kill him for what he did to Itachi. To my clan. But, he let out a long breath. But not everyone has to suffer for the choices of a few. And I know that now. I guess there's still some good in this stupid world. He wasn't sure what he expected Sakura's reaction to be to his admission, but it certainly wasn't laughter. What? He sneered, propping himself up to to see her better. She was laying on her futon cackling. How annoying. I just, she gasped. I just wonder who made you change your mind. Sasuke scowled. They both knew damn well who Sakura was thinking about. Naruto. Buffing up in annoyance, Sasuke grabbed his pillow from behind him and chucked it at his laughing teammate. It hit her square in the face, bowling her over. She didn't seem to mind. Naruto finally finally got you, she gasped between laughing. You you fucking Tsunere. If you keep laughing I'm going to kill you for real this time. She didn't stop. And if he was being honest, he didn't really want her to either. Chapter 39 Kakashi was not ready to face the Hokage the next morning, but he had to anyways. He had been called back to discuss the scroll he'd been given a few days prior, the one that had tipped him off about his students. The one Hiruzen suspected of holding hidden information. Since Kakashi hadn't made a report on his findings yet, he had to do so now. And God was he dreading it. Kakashi, Hiruzen started, eyeing him with tired eyes. Arresting your student would do that to you, he figured. Though Kakashi had no sympathy to give, considering everything he'd just learned last night. What did you find? It was moments like these Kakashi was grateful for his mask. Nothing, Lord Hokage, he lied. I didn't detect any hidden codes or ciphers with my Sharingan. So everything in the scroll is authentic? The third asked in clarification. Technically, yes. Succinct and to the point. And technically not a lie. And even so, the best farce was the one based on truth. Good, the Hokage sighed before him. I'm glad. I wouldn't put it past Orochimaru to have done something like that. Kakashi remained silent, figuring it best not to add his own musings on the subject. In fact, he had other topics on his mind, what of son is Jinchuriki? He asked. Gara, Naruto has called him. The fifth case cage and a good friend. Although he wasn't quite that person yet. Arrested earlier this morning, Hiruzen replied levelly. 
As the second exam ended today and all our information was confirmed, we saw fit to finally put all the Suna and Oto ninja in custody. Kakashi hummed thoughtfully. And his seal? He asked, referring to the relatively unstable nature of it. Taken care of, the Hokage said. For now. So a patch job. Or perhaps just more potent chakra dampeners. Either way they would need a more permanent solution. Unfortunately that solution was abroad and writing porn. I see, Kakashi said. Now, if I am no longer needed, go ahead, here is and dismissed, waving him off. Your genin probably need you. They've been through quite the ordeal. Kakashi snorted under his breath as he bowed farewell. That they have. We should tell Karen, was the first thing out of Naruto's mouth when his team came to pick him up the next day. They were all standing in the doorway, waiting on him to get his things so they could head out when he had suggested it. Technically he was also still on bed rest and shouldn't be going anywhere, but with his natural Uzumaki energy and Kurama, he knew it wouldn't take as long as it would for normal people. So he had no qualms about agreeing to a team meeting today. What he was having an issue with though was his house guest. Or more specifically, how he was going to keep such a massive secret from her in the long run. Ultimately he decided he wouldn't be able to. Which led him to now. Sakura stared at him, dumbfounded. No. She cried. She barely knows us. Growling, Naruto stepped outside and shut the door behind him with his good arm, effectively blocking Karen from possibly overhearing their conversation. Look, she's family. Family doesn't keep secrets from each other. That's rich, Sakura deadpanned, obviously referring to her parents and how they thought she was still 12. Naruto just rolled his eyes in response. Yeah but like, they're your parents, he argued. She's my cousin. I don't wanna start things out by lying. We don't know how she would respond, Kakashi-sensei cut in. It's too much of a risk. Desperately, Naruto looked to Sasuke. He had spent the most amount of time with her. He probably knew her best. Sakura, catching on to his thinking, followed suit. Finally the Uchiha seemed to notice all eyes were on him. Sighing heavily, he shifted his weight and shrugged. She's loyal, I'll give her that. Even after I stabbed her she still stood by my side. You stabbed her. Not now, sensei. Regardless, Sasuke pushed. I can vouch for her. Naruto nodded exuberantly. Yes, yeah, sensei, see. I didn't say it was a good idea though. Naruto just rolled his eyes in response. That's what you said about my sexy jutsu and look how that turned out. The furious blush on Sakura's face and absolute deadpan on Sasuke's made Kakashi sensei decide that particular conversation was better left unheard. All right fine, the Jonin finally sighed. I've heard your case. But we should get going. Naruto, get your shoes and say bye to Karen. Naruto nodded before heading back instead to hid his cousin farewell for the day. Five minutes later they were all ready to head to their training ground. Okay, first off, their sensei said as they arrived at training ground 7. Let's start this meeting off by you three transforming into your older selves. The statement was met with three confused stares. Sighing, the Jonin went on to elaborate. It's still hard to take you seriously when you look like children, he admitted. I want to see what I'm actually working with, here. The three nodded in understanding, all moving to form the ram hand sign. When the cloud of smoke dissipated, their sensei was left facing three teenagers, all almost a foot taller than before. They were all wearing the clothing they had in the war, instead this time it was intact. Sakura was missing her Byakugo and Sasuke his Rinnegan, but Naruto supposed that was because they hadn't seen it for themselves yet. But their sensei had to focus on one detail. Sasuke, where's your headband? Kakashi sensei asked. Team 7 froze. Right. They hadn't told him Sasuke had become a rogue ninja. Nor had they explained his relationship with Orochimaru. Panicking, Naruto and Sakura looked over to the Uchiha to see what he'd say, at a loss for words themselves. I was kidnapped by Orochimaru for three years, he answered simply. I didn't mention it because it wasn't relevant. AKA, he hadn't thought of an excuse until just last night. Not relevant, their sensei echoed. It was an uneventful three years. And that was the end of that. If Sakura and Naruto had been sweating bullets the entire time, neither Sasuke or Kakashi sensei needed to know. All right then, their sensei sighed. What are your ranks? Chunin, Sakura immediately answered. Possibly being considered for Jonin due to my efforts in the war as both chief medic and frontline fighter. Kakashi sensei rose an eyebrow at the proclamation. If you're a medic, you wouldn't be a frontline fighter, he stated simply. Sakura just smirked in response. Not unless you've mastered the Byakugo, she smiled, referencing the seal both she and Lady Tsunade had mastered. 
Ah, was all their sensei said. Sakura's smile widened. It was nice to see her sensei finally fearing her strength once again. And uh, Naruto. He continued. Naruto straightened up and pointed a thumb at his headband. Next in line for Hokage, you know. He exclaimed. Kakashi sensei didn't seem impressed, though. I understand that, he said. But what's your rank? Naruto visibly deflated. He looked down at his sandals before answering. Quote dot dot dot. Jenin, he finally mumbled. Jenin. Their sensei echoed, clearly trying to hide his shock. Naruto shrugged. I just like, never got around to it, you know. Never got around to it. He echoed again. Naruto puffed up angrily. We were a little busy, okay. His sensei finally let out an exasperated sigh before turning to their last teammate. And Sasuke, he asked. Surely you're at least a chunin. What a vote of confidence, Naruto thought with a roll of his eyes. No, Sasuke replied coolly. Jenin. The sweat drop from their sensei was truly one to behold. It was almost an hour later when they'd finished up explaining their skill set and ranks to their sensei. He was now all caught up on their techniques, Sasuke's Mangekyo and Rinnegan, Naruto's Kayubi and Sage Mode, and Sakura's Byakugo and Strength. They'd also explained all the other jutsu they'd picked up along the way. Sasuke talked about how he was a skilled swordsman now, as well as having mastery of the Chidori like Kakashi Sensei had never seen. Naruto went into how he'd finally perfected his dad's Rasengan, using Sage Mode to enhance its power and range. Sakura didn't have much to add, but she noted how her medical prowess had earned her the rank of chief field medic in the war. Suffice to say, Kakashi Sensei had been impressed by all of it. But they still had things to cover. While I'm glad you all turned out to be exceptional shinobi, he said. We still have to deal with today's problems. First things first, he crossed his arms seriously. Gara, the teenagers in front of him, still in their henged forms, nodded seriously, their easy expressions gone in a flash. Kakashi Sensei continued on. He's the most immediate threat, he said in reference to Sunna's Jinchuriki. Currently being detained as we speak now that the second exam is over. The three teens in front of him nodded along, taking in the information with cool professionalism. Currently I doubt the third knows what to do with him, as he's both the Kazekage's son and the Jinchuriki of Suna. It'd cause an international incident, Sakura announced. If we were to execute him as protocol demands if it were under normal circumstances. Kakashi sensei nodded. Sakura's right. So then what do we do? Naruto asked. That's where this gets tricky, the Jonin admitted. What did you all do last time? Well, Naruto started, thinking back to the original Chunin exams. He kinda went crazy and leveled a forest. And he almost killed Sakura, Sasuke added. Hmm, let's not repeat that. Sakura scoffed. Please. Besides, Naruto continued. He and his siblings got away anyway. They escaped while Orochimaru was battling Old Man Third. To which Lord Hiruzen lost, Kakashi Sensei surmised, remembering their account of it. The three teenagers nodded. Taking into account everything that you've said about him in the future, he's a good person, he continued. Would you say so? Naruto nodded enthusiastically. He's awesome, you know. But right now he's a murderous psychopath, Sasuke noted, right now, Naruto amended. But not later. Which is why I'm wondering how we get to that point, Kakashi Sensei wrapped up. You said he changed his ways because you beat him. Well, there's no way we can reenact that scenario seeing as he's behind bars. Naruto frowned, thinking. Next to him Sakura was doing the same, chewing on her lip as she did so. It was a habit she'd unfortunately picked up while studying medical ninjutsu. Meanwhile Sasuke didn't look the east bit contemplative. Wait, Naruto suddenly spoke up. The rest of the team could practically see the light bulb over his head signaling an epiphany. Shukaku is the reason he's so crazy, he said. If I just tell Shukaku to quit it, he should be fine, right? Looks of disbelief greeted him from all sides. Naruto, how the hell would you do that? Sakura asked. Her puzzled expression was mirrored on both their sensei and Sasuke. Through our mindscape, duh, he replied. I learned the trick from Octopops. Octopops. Kakashi sensei echoed. Next to him, Sakura sighed. He means Killer B, the Hachibi Jinchuriki. Anyways, Naruto said. Kurama and I can talk to him, he insisted. I just need to get into the prison to see him. Which is impossible, Sasuke countered. He's guarded by loads of Anbu or Jonin. There's no way you could get in. Ah, but that's where you're wrong, their sensei quipped cheerfully. All three of them turned to face him with matching frowns. What's that supposed to mean, you know? Naruto asked skeptical. The mischievous glimmer in his eye sparkled with untapped mirth. Who said you had to sneak in? 
Chapter 40 The plan was laid out, and everyone knew what they had to do to prepare. As it was late afternoon though, the team decided to put off their plan until tomorrow. So, after being dismissed, the three time travelers started to head home. Naruto, Kakashi Sensei suddenly called out. Can I have a word? Naruto stopped in his tracks, frowning. They'd just finished detailing their plan for how to get into the prison to see Gara and were headed home. What could Kakashi Sensei possibly want to talk about? Naruto looked back at his teammates for guidance. Sakura shook her head with a shrug to signify she wasn't sure what the Jonin wanted to talk about, while Sasuke merely shrugged. Well, it looked like Naruto was on his own. Uh, sure. He finally said. Waving Sakura and Sasuke off, Naruto walked back over to his sensei, who beckoned him over to the memorial stone. Oh, he realized with a pang, so it was going to be that kind of conversation. For a little while neither said anything. Neither really knew what to say. What was Kakashi Sensei thinking about? Was he going to warn him about the dangers of their plan? Tell him the whole story about Obito and his Sharingan, which Naruto didn't seem to think was likely at the current moment. What on earth could it be? I'm sorry I never told you about your parents, the Jonin finally offered. Of all the things Naruto thought he was going to say, that wasn't it. Frowning, Naruto looked up at his sensei. What? You said you knew who your parents were back at the hospital, his sensei elaborated. And you explained how you met both of them, yes. Naruto nodded mutely. Next to him, Kakashi sensei sighed. I wish you could have found out another way. So, why didn't you? Tell me that is, Naruto asked. Although a part of him already suspected the answer. Sighing, his sensei looked over to him from the stone, lone eye heavy with guilt. There was a gag order put on everyone who knew who your real parents were, he said. We were forbidden from even talking about it, to you or anyone else. Naruto frowned. If he was younger he felt as though he definitely would have been hurt by this news. Probably even angry. Keeping his parents from him was cruel, beyond cruel really. But now he just felt, tired. I get it, Kakashi sensei, he said honestly. But you don't gotta apologize. You were under orders, you know. He could tell though by what little expression he could see that his sensei still felt guilty. It doesn't excuse my actions or lack thereof. Then, added on, your father and I were very close. I should have been there for you like he was there for me, and I'm sorry I wasn't. Naruto tried to ignore the heat rising in his chest. The kind that made your throat close up and your eyes sting. Now wasn't the time for tears, he tried to tell himself. Not yet, at least. Yeah but that's all in the past, Naruto said, trying to put on a smile. So it doesn't matter. Kakashi sensei cocked an unamused eyebrow. Not if you're a time traveler, he noted dryly. Well, whatever, the blonde shrugged, stuffing his hands in his pockets and turning to face the Jonin. I mean, as a time traveler, he smirked. I think I have full authority to say that the past is what the past is, and that it's the future ya gotta focus on, you know. Despite the mask, Naruto could see the dry smirk on his sensei's face. Ma, alright, he chuckled. Then he reached out and ruffled Naruto's hair. Just a quick motion, but enough to spark a warm feeling in Naruto's chest. Now, we have a Jinchuriki to meet tomorrow. You should get some rest, he added, putting an end to the conversation. Right, yeah. Naruto turned to head back to his place, but stopped when he was a few yards away. Um, if it's okay, he added over his shoulder. Could you tell me about them sometime? My parents. He may have met his parents, but he didn't know anything about them. Kakashi sensei however had been his father's student. He must have known him well. And hopefully, by association, his mother. Naruto wasn't sure what he expected from his sensei in response, but a soft smile didn't seem to be it. Of course, Naruto, Kakashi sensei softly replied. Now get going, he added, waving his hand dismissively. You have a cousin waiting for you. Naruto felt a large grin stretch over his face before he rushed off towards the village and towards his family waiting for him at home. I'm home. Naruto called as soon as he opened the door. Immediately a blur of red filled his vision and he tackled with a hug. Welcome back. Karen cried. I hope you don't mind but I cleaned the place up a bit. I didn't know where everything went though so some stuff might not be in the right place. She pulled away, expression suddenly unsure. Is that alright? Naruto just beamed. Totally fine, you know. Then, rubbing the back of his neck awkwardly, added, to be honest, I don't think I've ever really organized my apartment anyway. So this'll be a first. Karen's face went from elated to deadpan in not even a second. You're a real slob, you know that. She grumbled. Naruto shrugged. It's an Uzumaki thing. 
Karen scoffed, sticking her nose up in the air. My mom was never this messy, was her haughty reply. Maybe it's just a woman thing. On one hand, it was nice to see Karen coming into her own. On the other hand, woman thing huh, he thought bitterly. Anyways, she continued, snootiness receding. I started cooking dinner. I had to buy some, well, most of the ingredients cause well. You kinda don't have anything except ramen. She scrunched her face up in a small show of disgust. Which, fair, I'm making katsudon, if that's okay. Naruto's smile returned. Sounds great. Awesome, she blushed. It's almost done, so help me with the dishes. After taking his sandals and coat off, Naruto set to work with setting the table for dinner. Once the bowls and chopsticks were set, they dug in. Thanks for the food. The two were silent for a while while they ate before Karen noticed Naruto looking at her. What? She asked. Nothing, he grinned. Then, shoveling some rice onto his chopsticks, said, Just that, I've never got to share a meal with family before. Right, she breathed. Family. Naruto could see out of the corner of his eyes the soft smile lighting up Karen's face. She hadn't had this either for a long time. She was probably just as nervous about it as him, but at the same time, it was exciting. They got to share their life with someone. Someone who cares. And they'd both lost enough to know to cherish it. It was scary, but it was good. It felt good. Hey uh, there was something I wanted to talk to you about, he started, changing the subject. Karen looked up from her katsudan. Her face fell in what looked like nervousness. Yeah, it's nothing bad. He rushes to assure her. But it is, weird. Or, unbelievable I guess. Like, okay, it's super crazy, you know. Like super crazy. Spit it out, Naruto, she ordered. Right, he sighed. So, um, anyway, this had been far easier when he'd told Kakashi-sensei. So why was he having such a hard time now? Oh, right. Because he'd known Kakashi-sensei for years and had basically just met Karen a few days ago. Okay, he finally got out. My team and I aren't what you'd call, normal. Karen cocked an eyebrow. Quote dot dot dot. Okay. So far so good. We know things we shouldn't, he continued. And because of that we're in lots of danger. We're also not Genin level either. We're like, super crazy strong. Like Jonin strong. At least. And I wanted to tell you because I don't want to lie to you about anything. What do you mean? She asked, frowning. How are you still Genin? We sorta aren't. So you guys are like secret operatives? She asked. Are you on a special mission? Then, with a gasp asked, is that why you fought that man in the forest of death? Was he your target? Um, yes and no, he tried. We are everything you just said, but also, kind of sort of from, oh boy. It was now or never. The future. Karen blinked. The what now? The next day the plan was put into action. That morning Kakashi headed to the Hokage Tower in the hopes of having a last-minute audience with the man himself. It wasn't necessarily vital that this part of the plan work, but it would make it incredibly easier. Fortunately, luck was in his favor, and he was allowed entry to speak to the Hokage. Kakashi, Lord Third said as he strolled into his office. What a pleasant surprise. To what do I owe the pleasure? Instead of replying cordially, Kakashi cut straight to it. I'd like Naruto to meet Gara of the desert. Blinking in surprise, Hiruzen eyed the man. And what sparked this request, if I may ask, he said slowly. Naruto is the Jinchuriki of Konoha, Kakashi stated. Gara of the desert is the Jinchuriki of Suna. Except Gara is far more unstable than Naruto. Kakashi watched the Hokage to see his reaction. His face was neutral, which while giving nothing away still told Kakashi the man didn't have any objections. Yet. Continuing, Kakashi said, I think it would be beneficial for Naruto to see what can become of a Jinchuriki if he's not careful. Is that so? Hiruzen asked. A faint edge to his tone reminded Kakashi just who he was talking to. The Jonin backed off some and lowered his head. Yes, he said. And I believe it would be good for Naruto as a Jinchuriki to meet another Jinchuriki so as to better understand his position. Position is a political deterrent that was. Also, he added as an afterthought. I hear the mistreat their Jinchuriki in Sunagakur. Maybe it would help put things in perspective for Naruto to see that. Or, in other words, Naruto has it better than Gara, and he saw that, it might inspire more loyalty towards the village. It was a dirty move Kakashi despised making, but he needed the Hokage's approval. After a moment of nerve-wracking silence, Hiruzen finally spoke. I will allow you to let them meet, the Hokage finally said. If, Kakashi knew there was an, if. You can guarantee it will not affect Naruto adversely. Not for the first time, Kakashi was glad he wore a mask. If not the Hokage would have seen his devilish smirk. 
I promise you, Lord Hokage, Kakashi swore. Naruto will not be affected. But that Gara kid hopefully will. Kanaha's prison wasn't what one would call hospitable. It was dark and eerie, dampness dripping down the walls from unknown sources in the stone ceiling above. Noise was echoed and amplified down the tunnels, turning moans into screams and whimpers into shrieks. Dim lights were set up every ten feet, casting sickly yellow light into the corridors and throwing every nook and cranny in deep shadows. Overall, not somewhere Naruto was particularly keen on being. This place gives me the creeps, Naruto muttered as they walked past another cell, too dark to see if anyone was in it. That's the point, Naruto, Kakashi-sensei commented from behind him. We don't keep prisoners in cells so they feel comfortable. Huffing out a sigh, Naruto accepted his sensei's words and continued on down the passageway. Two Anbu were leading them through the prison, one up front and one behind. The three, Genin, walked a small cluster together, with their sensei bringing up their rear. They had been walking for minutes and so far had yet to reach their destination. Hey Naruto, Sakura whispered next to him. He looked over to show he was paying attention. How did your talk with Karen go last night? This grabbed Sasuke's attention as well, the young Uchiha looking over at the two. Uh, Naruto started. It went, he thought back to their conversation last night, remembering how many times he'd had to explain it to her. Not bad. So does she believe us? Sakura pried. Uh, I think so. That's a yes or no question, loser, Sasuke bit out in front of him. Look, I'm not an expert in knowing what people are thinking, he hissed back. Before anyone else could respond with a snarky comeback, they'd rounded a corner and the guard's lamplight was thrown into a cell to reveal. Kabuto, Sasuke drawled, pulling to a stop in front of the cell. Nice to see you behind bars. The young man looked up at them, lamplight flashing across his glasses. He was dressed in the standard prisoner garb with cuffs attached to his wrists and feet. A gash across his cheek was left unbandaged, dried blood crusting around it. Most likely from an attempt to evade arrest. He seemed very different from the cocky young man they'd seen at the first exam just over a week before. I don't think I ever told you my name, Sasuke, the spy replied coolly. You didn't have to, was the Uchiha's cryptic response. Behind him, both Sakura and Naruto were shooting Kabuto withering looks. Naruto didn't hate many people. But he did truly hate Kabuto. And so did Sakura. Come on, Kakashi-sensei urged from behind them. Let's not waste time. A light shove on his shoulder got Naruto moving. The Jinchuriki complied, but not before flashing his eyes red at the traitor. The look on Kabuto's face as Team 7 rounded the corner was priceless. As soon as they were out of hearing range, Kakashi-sensei leaned over to them and said, No more pit stops, okay. This isn't a field trip. He totally deserved it though, Naruto grumbled. Not something a future Hokage should be saying, was his annoying reply. Naruto opened his mouth to counter, but sighed and shut it in defeat. A few minutes later, the Anbu guiding them stopped. They're just behind that door, the one wearing the rat mask said. He was pointing to a heavy steel door, and by the seal lines tracing across it, Naruto figured it was meant for holding very powerful things inside. Like an unstable Jinchuriki. Thank you, Kakashi-sensei said from behind them. You are dismissed. The Anbu didn't leave, instead just backing up some down the hall. Above him Naruto heard Kakashi sigh. It wasn't exactly what they wanted but it was good enough. Moving them forward, he pressed his hand to the sealed door and the genin all watched as the seal spider webbed across the door slithered away. Kakashi sensei pushed open the door and walked inside, only beckoning them to follow once he disappeared into the darkness. Stealing his nerves, Naruto did just that, Sakura and Sasuke right on his heels. Then the door was shut behind them, and they were plunged into darkness and then a lamp was lit. It cast an eerie orange glow over the occupants of the separate cells. Three in total, all against the wall. In the dim light Naruto could make out Tamari in one of them, leaning against the wall in a bored slump. Across from her was Konkuro, sat in a rather similar position. And in the middle between them was Gara of the desert, Naruto announced, stepping into the light. As one Jinchuriki to another, we gotta talk. Chapter 41 The air in the cell which at first had at first been musty now seemed to crackle with electricity. Gara of the desert stood in silence as he stared unblinkingly onward at the Kyubi Jinchuriki, who met his gaze just as fiercely. On the sides, the other two Suna Genin watched with bated breath, fear keeping them in place. No one had spoken to Gara like that before and lived. No one. The proclamation of Naruto's status as a Jinchuriki did little to phase the occupant of the cell. 
The only indication he was even remotely intrigued was the slight narrowing of his eyes. You, Gara finally rasped out. His pale eyes were fixed on Naruto, the only light in them the reflections of the lamps lining the walls. Naruto felt himself stiffen inadvertently. He hadn't seen this look in Gara's eyes for nearly five years. The bloodlust behind it was practically tangible. You're that boy from the street aren't you? Gara finished. Instead of answering audibly, Naruto just nodded. So you're a Jinchuriki too, huh? He drawled. There was little inflection behind his voice, as if there was nothing less interesting to him. In their respective cells, Konkuro and Tamari both seemed to shrink back some, wide eyes fixed on Naruto. He wished they wouldn't, but it was understandable as they didn't know him. Yet, well, Gara spoke up again. I have nothing to say to you. The words came out like stone grating on stone. But Naruto wasn't going to let that stop him. He never backed down from anything. Well I got a lot to say to you, so you're gonna listen, you know, he shot back. Gara's only response was to narrow his eyes further. Taking a deep breath, Naruto steeled his nerves and stepped forward. He was now about two feet from the cell, an uncomfortably close distance for anyone who knew what Gara was. But to Naruto that didn't matter. All he saw was a friend in need, and by God was he going to help him. He held up a fist. What, is this? Gara rasped, his eyes were training on Naruto's outstretched hand. It was the same thing Killer B had done way back when, and it had given Naruto the idea. Just do it too, asshole, he bit back. On the sides of the room, Tamari and Konkuro watched the exchange wearily. They didn't look nervous of Naruto, but scared for him. Not that Gara could do anything with those chakra seals in place, anyways. Thank you, Anbu. If you don't cooperate, Kakashi-sensei cut in from behind him. Your stay here will be much more uncomfortable. Narrowing his eyes, Gara finally relented. Through the bar he held up his fist, pale and unblemished. Well, no going back now. See ya in a bit, guys, Naruto said. Then he hit Gara's fist with his own and the world around them vanished. White. White light surrounded the two shinobi, an empty void of stars and color. Opposite Naruto stood Gara, feet planted on the empty space beneath them. It was a familiar scene to Naruto. He'd met his dad here, met his mom here, spoken with others here. It was a place of peace. Somewhere where no harm could come to you supposedly. What is this place? Gara finally rasped out. He was glaring all around with suspicion in his eyes. Clearly this new setting wasn't as calming for him as it was for Naruo. Honestly. Naruto shrugged. No clue. Probably like a mindscape or something. No one's ever really explained it to me. Gara didn't appear to be satisfied with his answer but let it go nonetheless. So why are we here? The redhead demanded. Cause we gotta talk, dipshit, Naruto glowered. About what? Gara growled back. I don't owe you my time or breath. Fine, but you're still gonna listen to what I have to say if you ever wanna get out of this place. He shot back. You guys are war criminals and my village would be happy to keep you here for however long it takes. No one cares if the Kazekaj is your dad or not. Apparently, that struck a nerve. Pale turquoise eyes narrowed into dangerous slits. Not even my father cares that he's my father, Gara scoffed. So good luck using that as a bargaining chip. Uh, this conversation was getting nowhere. Look that's not what we need to talk about, Naruto finally groaned. So just shut up, would ya? Apparently Gara wasn't used to people talking to him like that. His mouth snapped shut and eyes widened almost comically in shock. Under different circumstances, Naruto would have laughed. But not today. I know what you think you are, he finally said. And what you do. His words were met with an empty stare. I just wanted to tell you it doesn't have to be that way. And what way is that? Gara sneered. Murdering people, calling yourself a monster, Naruto replied, waving his arms erratically as if to prove his point. Just because everyone says you're one doesn't mean you have to be. Gara's eyes narrowed. And why are you telling me this? Because if I don't, who will? Naruto cried. I'm a Jinchuriki too, people have called me a monster my whole life, I know how you feel and it sucks. But we can do so much good too. We have the power to make change and you're throwing it away by killing people needlessly. It's not needless, was the rasped response he got. It's my purpose. Naruto found himself growing angry. He stepped forward with fists clenched. Says who? He challenged. The only people who get to determine who we are is us. We were made, Gara shot back. Things that are made have purpose, and mine is to kill. I don't care what yours is so you may as well not exist to me. Then, only things with purpose should be allowed to exist. Everything else is a waste of space. An image of Haku flashed before Naruto's eyes. 
He died the first time around because he believed that was his purpose. But he was saved from that. Purpose didn't define people, people defined people. Now how could he make Gara see that? Fine then, he shot back. If you need a purpose so badly, everyone's purpose is to love and be loved. Life doesn't really matter otherwise. How's that for a purpose? Jinchuriki aren't human, we're monsters. Our existence is detested by the very people who created us. We can never be loved. Shut up. Whack. Gara went reeling back, just managing to catch himself before he could fall to the ground. Drip. Drip. Blood. Wide pale eyes stared transfixed at the crimson dripping from his mouth. The liquid ran slowly down his jaw before falling to the ground below, forming a small puddle. If one could even call it that. Your sand doesn't work here, Gara, Naruto said as he straightened up. We're on equal footing now. Slowly, Gara tipped his head back up to meet the other boy's eyes. Was this your plan all along? He breathed, voice faint. Bring me here to kill me. Naruto's face screwed itself up into a scowl. What? No. No, I want to help you. There's nothing I need help with. I've survived this long, after all. The words made Naruto's stomach churn uncomfortable. His frown deeped and he found himself stepping towards the boy, who'd since straightened up and was now at eye level. That's just it, you idiot, you're not supposed to survive, you're supposed to live. The answer Gara gave him was one that made his blood run cold. What's the difference? Naruto blanked. Because, he tried. He didn't know if his words were the right ones, or if they would even do anything, but he still had to speak. Because if you're not living, then you suffer, he managed. And then the people who care about you will suffer. And then it's just endless misery. People have been trying to kill me my whole life. My own father tried to kill me. How can you say that people care about me when they all want me gone? The exclamation ended with a choked sob. The impassive face of Gara had finally started to crack, and everything was starting to pour out. You say you know me but how could you? Gara continued. How could you know? No one's ever tried to assassinate me, that's true, Naruto found himself admitting. But when people are scared, they do dumb things. Lots of dumb things. The Uchiha massacre flashed through his head. But we just have to educate them. And yeah it's hard, but it's definitely worth it. I used to be a lot like you, but my friends saved me from that. And that taught me I could save others, and have others to care about. A small smile stretches across his face as he spoke. Memories of his time with Team 7, both from the past and now, the Konoha 12, Baruka Sensei, and so many others flashed through his mind. Gara, too. He would have so many friends, so many loved ones. He would be K's cage for crying out loud. Everyone would be his loved ones. Across from him, Gara's eyes widened in disbelief. They were red-rimmed from either being open too long or from emotion, either way Naruto couldn't tell. When people keep calling you a monster, eventually you start to believe it, he continued. And trust me, I know. And it hurts. But there are people who care about you, who know that all those idiots are wrong and that's what's important. Images of Aruka sensei Sasuke, Sakura, Kakashi-sensei, Pervy Sage, and many others flashed through his mind. If not for them, well. The alternative was looking at him. Your siblings love you, Gara, he said quietly. If you'll let them. And I promise, if you just open yourself up, you will have so many who'll love you and accept you as you are. I know, he thought to himself. Because I've seen it. You don't have to be defined by where you come from. You get to define yourself by where you're going and who goes with you. The eyes that had remained dull the entire time Naruto had been speaking to them suddenly flashed with a glint of, something. Life, interest, you name it. Whatever it was, Naruto knew he had gotten through, even if only somewhat. Is that what you do? Gara finally asked. Instead of the usual emotionless rasp, his voice had a hint of uncertainty. Do you, forge your own path regardless of your past? Naruto nodded enthusiastically. Yup, that's exactly right, you know. Then, flashing a toothy smile, added, and one day, I'm gonna be Hokage so I can protect everyone. Protect. Gara echoed. But why? Naruto found himself frowning. Because, he started. That's what you do for your loved ones. And like that it seemed like a switch was flipped in Gara's mind. Naruto couldn't tell what he was thinking of, unable to discern the expression on his face, but he suspected it had to do with his siblings, and his sand. Or whatever had happened in his past. Whatever it was, it worked. Also, Naruto continued with a smirk. I have a friend who'd like to meet you. You and Shukaku. It's been forever, what are they doing? Sasuke eyes snapped over to the sand ninja who'd spoken. It was the girl, Tamari. 
She was standing at the edge of her cell watching the two Jinchuriki with growing nervousness. Whether she was worried for them or of them Sasuke couldn't tell. Relax, Sasuke sighed. It's a Jinchuriki thing, I think, he added silently. Honestly Naruto never really explained it so he had no idea. But he wasn't about to admit that to the enemy. They'll both be fine, he continued. Naruto just needed somewhere private to talk. We're already in cells, Tamari pointed out dryly. What more do you need? Sasuke just rolled his eyes in response. Cells with Anbu guards outside and seals all over the place, he grumbled. Real private, huh. The sarcastic edge to his voice was not lost to the prisoners. Sasuke, he heard their sensei warn. Be nice. Disc. They were gonna destroy the village. What manners did he owe them? Whatever. Uncomfortable silence once again returned to the room. The only sound that broke it was the occasional drip of water or someone shifting their weight. It stretched on for another few minutes before someone finally spoke up. So he's really got a biju, the guy with the face paint suddenly asked. He was leaning against the bars more nonchalantly than his sister. Sasuke could have thought he was at ease but he knew that was the farthest thing from the truth. Everyone was strung tight as a bowstring, appearances be damned. Yeah, Sakura supplied. He is. Face paint frowned. But he's so, non-murderous. Put together, he finished. Why is he so different? That's, hard to answer, Sakura said uncertainty. He was ostracized as a kid but, he never let that stop him. He's driven, Sasuke found himself saying. No matter how many times people shunned him or said he'd never make anything of himself, he never backed down. He doesn't let what people think of him get in the way of who he knows he is. Of who he wants to be. Who he wants to be. Tamari echoed. That's right, Sakura smiled. Naruto's gonna be Hokage one day. He'll do it. Jinchuriki or not, you need to calm down, you damn tanuki. That was the first thing out of the fox's mouth as soon as the biju entered the mindscape. He towered over the teens with a scowl deep enough to make Danzo jealous. His red eyes were narrowed in annoyance and his tails lashed behind him. Overall, the picture of contempt. Across from him and behind Gara sat the Aikibi. And while his expressions were harder to make out, annoyance was clear on his face as well. While Naruto was used to sharing a mindscape with Biju, Gara clearly was not. He jumped in startlement and balked at the gigantic chakra constructs. It was almost comical. Karama AAA. Shukaku roared. What are you doing here? Is that really? Gara trailed off. Naruto nodded. Yup. The Kyubi and Aikibi. Say hi, Karama. From above them, Karama gave a half-hearted scowl. Hey brats. Gara was too shocked to speak. Anyways, Naruto said, looking up at Shikao. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, Jinchuriki of the Kayubi. Nice to meet ya. Instead of offering a reply Shukaku just looked down at him in disgust. What is this? The Tanuki scowled. Some brat thinks he can speak to me. Hey. Naruto shouted up at him. This brat is trying to help you. Oh. And how's that? Condescension practically dropped from his tongue. Well for one, by listening, he pouted. He means stop being such an ass and focus on something other than yourself for once, Kurama supplied calmly. Have you gone soft, Fox? The Aikibi taunted. You, the embodiment of rage, showing emotions. Better than spending my free time pretending to be some brat's mother, Kurama offered in return. Beneath him Naruto choked on his laughter. You don't get to laugh at me, brat. Shukaku cried in outrage. I'm the Aikibi, I am nature chakra incarnate. I am infinitely more powerful than you puny thing could ever dream of being. Grow up, you fucking moron, was all Kurama grumbled back. You lived in a pot and now you live in a prepubescent teen. Get down from that pedestal before you break something. Below the two beasts, Naruto and Gara watched in fascination. Naruto with a wry smirk plastered to his face, while Gara found himself dumbstruck. The monster that lived inside him all his life, that tormented him day in and day out, was, being scolded. It was almost unreal. Above them, Kurama's expression shifted suddenly to something more grim. All laughter was gone from his eyes, replaced with something harder and more serious. We weren't made to destroy, brother, as much as I understand the urge to do so, he growled out. Father made us to protect humans. To guide them. And I can't blame you for losing sight of that, as I did the same for a long time. If it was possible, the Tanuki looked ashamed, staring down at the ground beneath his feet. Kurama continued on regardless, driving his point home. We can hate them all we want, but we at least have to respect them. They've managed incredible feats and harnessed power almost equal to our own. And eventually they might even fight for us. Like in the war, Naruto remembered. 
Yes, not all humans are perfect or good, but that doesn't mean you should treat them all like they aren't. Especially innocent children who've done nothing to deserve that. His red eyes lowered from Shukaku to Gara pointedly. You'd do best to remember that. The tanuki sulked in silence after Kurama finished, his golden eyes narrowed and glowering at his feet. Naruto was reminded of Konohamaru being scolded and wearing the same look on his face. It was the expression of someone who knew they were in the wrong but were loath to admit it. Especially to an elder. Well, Kurama was the older brother, Naruto figured. Look, Kurama sighed. One day we might need to rely on our dumb humans. It's hard to explain why, but just trust me on this. So maybe try being nice for once. The fox glanced down at Naruto, just a moment, before saying. You'll find that it's better than being alone. Naruto found he didn't have anything to add to that. Instead, he just smiled. Chapter 42 It was a long while before Naruto and Gara opened their eyes again. When they did, the Sand siblings saw something in their brother they hadn't seen in a very long time, light. He wasn't smiling necessarily, but his eyes were. Like a gentle smile when watching the desert rains, or seeing children playing without all the worries of adulthood. If Tamari had to describe how her little brother looked, she could only say soft. She didn't know what that Naruto boy did, but she knew she would be forever grateful. Better, the boy in question asked. Gara managed a small nod in response, which was more than he ever gave most of the time. Great, the blonde Jinchuriki smiled. Now we just gotta get you out of here. What, you're going to break us out? Konkuro suddenly exclaimed across the cell from her. The pink-haired girl just laughed. No, but I wish we could. Unfortunately there are laws, Naruto added which we should respect, their sensei reprimanded them. Tamari took note of his use of, respect, instead of, follow. Turning to her, the Jonin continued by saying, unfortunately we do have to follow the chain of command, seeing as you were a part of an attempted coup. We didn't even want to be, Konkuro groused, truly acting like the 14-year-old he was. It wasn't our idea either, Tamari insisted. Our village has been losing money. We haven't been getting enough missions due to them being outsourced by the daimyos. The Jonin said nothing in response, but did raise an intrigued eyebrow. You know, the Jinchuriki Naruto started. We can probably make the cages come to an agreement. Six pairs of eyes found themselves boring into the preteen. Was he crazy? The cages were the most suborn men in the land. How could just a few genin and a sensei possibly convince them of anything? I mean, we have his kids hostage, he quickly added as their gazes started boring holes in him. And even if he doesn't act like he cares for them, he still has to like, I don't know, be a dad. If we all were to die, Suna wouldn't have a fifth case cage, Konkuro suddenly piped up. The Konoha shinobi turned to look at him in confusion. The role of case cage is passed down through family. No one outside of our line has ever even been considered. If Rasa were to lose all three of his children, Suna would be left defenseless. And that would be a show of carelessness or weakness or whatever. He couldn't afford to do it. He'd have to come. The four Konoha shinobi appeared both startled and excited by the new information. They all shared a look and smiled. I promise we'll get you out of here soon. Naruto grinned. Leave it to us. The walk back through the prison halls was just as eerie as before, but this time everyone seemed to have a lighter step. Even Sasuke, ever so dour, seemed to be in a better mood, though it was slightly dampened by the Anbu in front and behind them. Sensei, Sakura asked, breaking the silence that had accumulated since leaving the prison cell. What happens now with the exams? Are they gonna be cancelled? Above them, Kakashi Sensei sighed heavily. Most likely, he replied. What with half the contestants being involved in an attempted coup d'etat, it would only make sense. But what about all the others? Naruto asked. The guys from Taki, and Konoha, and Aim, and Kusa. They didn't do anything. Did they just wait another six months to take the exam again? Kakashi Sensei just shrugged nonchalantly. Probably. If they got this far in the exams they can do it again. Naruto found himself frowning at the reply. If that were true, then Shikamaru wouldn't be promoted for another six months, but, he realized, they wouldn't need him to lead a rescue mission anytime soon. So maybe it was okay that he won't be promoted just quite yet. So what about us? What about you? The Jonin echoed. Well, Naruto started. We went up against a Sanin, shouldn't we be like, promoted for that on the spot? On top of everything else we've done, that is, he added mentally. Instead of answering with reassurance, their sensei just sighed wearily. Promotions aren't that simple, Naruto. In wartime there can be many field promotions and the like. 
But right now we're not at war. And to add to that you three technically forfeit the second exam when you summoned Katetsu, purposeful or not. Well that blows, Sakura grumbled. I was really hoping to make Chunin. Their sensei only shrugged in response. The rest of the walk through the halls was in comfortable silence. Finally, the four shinobi were escorted out of Kanaha's prison and into the bright summer sunlight. It was early afternoon, the sounds of the village not far off, seemingly bustling with activity. Turning around, Kakashi sensei gave a quick salute to the Anbu, waving them off. With a quick salute back, they disappeared with a shunshin, presumably back into the prison or to report to the Hokage. Finally Team 7 were allowed a moment to breathe. Next to Neuto, Sasuke let out a big sigh. That's one thing off our to-do list, the Uchiha commented. Finally. Well, I think we deserve a treat after all that. Sakura exclaimed brightly, the announcement accompanied by a big stretch. We did just save the village after all. Again, Naruto opened his mouth to agree but was cut off before he could. Before any of us do anything, Kakashi-sensei interrupted. Naruto and I have to go see the Hokage. Naruto blinked in surprise. Huh, why? You still have that seal on you from Orochimaru, remember, his sensei said. We need to get it off you as soon as possible. Otherwise your chakra control will be all over the place. Right, Naruto recalled. Orochimaru had hit him with something mid-battle that had made Kurama's chakra disappear. He vaguely remembered something similar happening the first time around, but that fight had been more of a blur. Probably due to the fox's influence, he figured. Also the fact that it had happened over five years ago for him. But wait, he realized. Don't we need a sealmaster for that? He wasn't sure, but taking off a seal from Orochimaru surely wasn't some small feat. Not even Kakashi-sensei could manage it with Sasuke's cursed seal originally. That's part of what we're going to talk about. Then, you two run along now. We'll meet up at my place in the morning. The two younger shinobi nodded their affirmation before heading off back to the village. Naruto and Kakashi-sensei watched for a bit before the janin ushered him along. Walking through the streets to the tower though was strange. Naruto had thought he'd gotten used to it again, but after his conversation with Gara, he was acutely aware of all the looks being thrown at him. Sure they weren't as bad as when he hadn't been a ninja, but they were still, isolating. He even noticed Kakashi-sensei getting a polite smile or a wave right before getting frowned at himself. A selfish part of him wished pain would show up so he could prove himself to everyone again. Don't pay attention to them. A voice snapped Naruto out of his thoughts. Above him, Kakashi-sensei was giving icy stares to anyone looking their way. As long as you know who you are, their beliefs don't matter. Naruto blinked, surprised by the wisdom of his sensei's words. I, Naruto blinked. Thank you, sensei. The janin flashed him one of the those squinty smiles of his. Don't mention it. Naruto felt himself smile warmly in response. Entering the Hokage's office felt like stepping into a bubble. The busy sounds of the tower vanished and in its place was a feeling of underlying dread. There was nothing to be scared of here, Naruto knew, but the feeling in his gut wouldn't go away. Maybe it was something in the Hokage's eyes, they were harder than usual. The old man smiled and broke the silence. Naruto, it's good to see you back on your feet. I'm glad you are doing better. Thank you Lord Hokage, Naruto replied, giving a small bow. The old man's face twitched somewhat in response. Odd. Lord Hokage, Kakashi-sensei cut in. What are we going to do about Orochimaru's seal? Do you have any seal master in mind who could help? The old man's smile faded at Kakashi-sensei's reminder. The only seal master we have who could fix this is currently out of the village, he sighed in defeat. It will take a few days for him to get back if we send out a summons today. So until then, for everyone's safety Naruto, I forbid you from trying to use your chakra. Naruto wanted to scoff. It wasn't his chakra the Hokage was worried about, but Kurama's. And besides, he had nothing to worry about anyway. He'd used chakra before the seal came off the first time and it'd been fine. Maybe the old man's age was really getting to him. Old people were always paranoid, right? Yes, Lord Hokage, he responded instead. Good, now, the old man continued. On to what I wanted to talk to you about. Naruto straightened up. Kakashi told me that during the fight with Orochimaru you somehow accessed an, orange chakra cloak. Do you remember this? Ah, so that was it. Right, because at this time using any of Kyuubi's chakra was a hazard, purposeful or not. Slowly, Naruto nodded his head, carefully controlling his expression so it wouldn't give anything away. Are you aware of what that was? The Hokage continued. Hesitantly, he nodded again. 
It was K the fox, right? That was his chakra, yes, was the succinct reply. The seal placed on you by the fourth Hokage allows some of the nine tails power to leak into your chakra system. He believed that by doing this, it would be easier for you to master its power. Naruto already knew this of course, but wisely kept his mouth shut. However, the old man continued. There is a risk to it. When at times of high duress it appears the valve opens a little more, allowing you more access to that power. The issue with that though is that the more chakra from the fox is in your system, the more sway it has over you. Yeah, Naruto definitely knew that, shaking the thought aside, Naruto spoke. So, what you're saying is to not get angry? He asked. I'm telling you that you should be careful and mindful of your emotions. It can become dangerous to yourself and everyone around you if you lost control while in that state. No shit. Deciding to play dumb, Naruto asked, what'll happen if I lose control? The hard look that had resided in the Hokage's eye during the meeting darkened drastically. Suddenly, Naruto was reminded why this man had held the title of Hokage for so long. I will not sugarcoat it for you, Naruto, he said in stony voice. It is entirely possible the fox could escape. And if that happens, you would die. Despite knowing this, ice washed through Naruto's veins at the statement. An image of his mom's sad smile suddenly filled his head. If it weren't for her broken seal, she would still be here. Being a Jinchuriki really was a sacrifice, just as the name implied. If you failed, you died. Simple as that. And he had. Once. But this seal was his dad's, it wouldn't break unless he wanted it to. For now anyway. And if what happened last time happened again, well, he had Kurama and his father to help him through. Probably. He really wasn't sure if his father's chakra was still in the seal or not. Most likely, considering it was still the old seal. At least, he hoped for that to be the case. Shaking himself from memories of the future, Naruto stuck himself back in the present. What would happen if it starts to break though, he asked. He knew, but he still had to play the part. There are countermeasures in place, was the Hokage's cryptic answer. Gee, Naruto grimaced. Thanks. Also, the old man continued. If you do start to experience that, chakra cloak, again, if you are able, find a Jonin and they should be able to help. A pointed look was sent Kakashi Sensei's way. Understood sir, the genin nodded. Is there anything else, Lord Hokage? Kakashi sensei asked. The old man just shook his head. No, that is all. You are dismissed. Wait, Naruto cut in. One last thing. The old man rose an eyebrow, but didn't stop him from continuing. The sand siblings, they say the only reason they were assigned this mission was because of something to do with the daimyos and missions or something. Maybe instead of a coup you could like, I dunno no, talk to the daimyos. Instead of killing. First, he didn't seem all too impressed, but then a look of mirth entered the Hokage's eyes. Well, I suppose so, he offered. It's always best to talk instead of fight. Perhaps we can reach an understanding. Relief flowed through Naruto at the proclamation, making his shoulders sink a good half foot. I'll explain the situation in better detail, if you require, Lord Hokage, Kakashi sensei offered. The old man nodded. Now, if that is all, you are dismissed. Apparently, I have a cage and some daimyos to message. Naruto offered a bow before turning around to leave, alone, as Kakashi sensei would stay behind and hash the political stuff out. Before opening the door though, he turned around, an idea forming in his head. Has it ever happened before? He asked suddenly. A biju escaping. He knew the answer, of course. It had happened before. His mom. But he wanted to look the old man in the eye and see what he had to say to see if he trusted Naruto enough to tell him the truth. He was a ninja of Konoha, and the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi. He had a right to be trusted. But he wanted to see if the old man thought that too. The answer he got sent a stone falling into the pit of his stomach. No, was the man's reply. Not in Konoha. Chapter 43 Before now, Naruto had never had a reason to doubt the old man. He'd been a kind, and good leader. But after seeing him boldly lie to his face like that, and about his own family. Something just didn't sit well with him. Now Naruto wasn't really one for politics or whatever, and he was sure there was a reason the old man had done it, but it still irked him. He was a full-fledged shinobi of Konoha and the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi. Surely that garnered a semblance of respect. Frustrated, Naruto kicked at a pebble on the road, watching as it clattered down the street. What did it take to gain the old man's trust? He'd taken down a terrorist, exposed an attack against the village, and proved himself to be a good shinobi. Sure he was just a genin but that shouldn't matter. 
He'd proved himself on an A rank for crying out loud, and the man had still lied to his face. Deep inside, Naruto could feel his faith in the Hokage crumbling. He didn't want to acknowledge it, but the thought was there. If this was how the old man was gonna be, could Naruto even trust him to do what needed to be done when something finally happened? Could he lead a war against the Akatsuki? Join forces with the other nations? Could he even make peace with Suna? Maybe there was a reason he'd retired in the first place. Sighing heavily, Naruto tried to force all of the thoughts out of his head. He was too tired to deal with this shit. There was nothing he could do about it for the time being anyways. It would be a few days before the case cage would drag his ass over here to sort shit out. Although, a few days, was being kind. Maybe a month was more accurate. And then, to get the seal off. Jiraiya. Naruto stopped dead in the middle of the road. Some people bumped into him and grumbled, but he didn't notice, mind too far away to even try. Jiraiya, he thought. He was the only seal master capable of fixing what Orochimaru had done, and he was coming here. Jiraiya, who had been like a grandpa to him. Who had taught him so much. Who had died. Jiraiya, who didn't even know who he was right now. Forcing his feet to move again he resumed his walk home, stubbornly refusing to admit that the heat growing behind his eyes were tears. I'm home. He called. Naruto had done this all his life, but never before, at this point in time at least, had he ever received an answer. Well, he didn't receive an answer this time, not in the usual sense anyway, but he was met with a startled cry and a pan being dropped on the floor. Karen. In his kitchenette stood a startled redhead, a spilled bowl of something on the floor from where she must have dropped it. Was she, cooking? To be honest Naruto didn't even know he owned a mixing bowl so this was a surprise to him. Ah, you're back. I'm so sorry I spilled everything, I'll clean it all up, I promise. Immediately the girl got to work picking up the splattered food, rambling the whole while. It's just, it was really kind of you to offer your place to me and I didn't want to be a burden and I thought the best way to not be is to make you some food. But now I spilled it all so I get if you're mad at me. You're fine, you know. He cut in, stopping her mid-rant. I just sorry I startled you, he chuckled. And you're not gonna be a burden. Honestly I'm just happy to finally have family to come home to. At his words, Karen's anxiety slipped off her face, replaced instead by a warm smile. That's I'm a, thank you. She managed. And you too. A long awkward pause followed her words. So, she wrung her fingers together nervously, red eyes flickering over every surface that wasn't him. Um, are we gonna talk about that whole, time travel, thing? You didn't really explain before dashing off. Right. Naruto had only told her the bare minimum which she'd somehow believed before rushing off to join the rest of his team so they could get to the prison to talk with Gara. He'd explained it was a freak accident and that he just wanted her to know so he wouldn't have to lie to her. Apart from that, he hadn't said much. Like that she used to, would, work for a terrorist organization, or almost die by Sasuke's hand, or that there was a conspiracy to destroy all known life by a moon goddess alien thing. Yeah, they had a lot to talk about. Yeah, yeah um, he looked around for somewhere to sit. This wasn't gonna be a short conversation. I'll get some tea going first. Just sit wherever. Karen nodded, plopping down on the edge of his bed. It wasn't like there was much seating in the one bedroom. Naruto would probably have to take the kitchen chair. After boiling the water and letting the tea steep, the two got to talking. So, Naruto hummed. I don't know where to start. The beginning. His cousin offered lamely. Technically, he thought to himself. The beginning of this messed up story was a few thousand years ago. Or maybe it was the night of the Kyubi attack. Or when Hashirama and Madara had their big fight. Or whenever Obito, died. Sighing to himself, Naruto decided to just go with the easiest option, the one that would make the most sense. Hopefully. Okay so like, I'm actually 17, he started. He watched Karen's expression carefully but so far he didn't see anything concerning. Um, I was fighting in this big war with Sakura and Sasuke when we were like, I don't know, shot back to our younger selves. He shrugged helplessly. So that was like three-ish months ago. And we've sort of been working on stopping the war that we were fighting but so far we haven't done much. Um, we just told Kakashi Sensei cause he kinda found out. No one else knows. A pause. Except now you, you know. A long silence followed the confession. Karen used the time to sip slowly at her tea with a faraway look in her eyes. Naruto couldn't blame her. If someone had told him all this he wouldn't be taking it nearly half as well as she was now. Finally, the girl spoke up. So is that how you knew we were cousins? She asked. 
You'd already met me. Yeah, the blonde smiled. I mean, we never really got to know each other, but you were friends with Sasuke. The redhead grimaced immediately. Him. She groaned. But he's so lame. Naruto choked on his tea. They'd finally settled down to bed, deciding to share a futon on the floor instead of fighting over who got the bed. Now that all the excitement of the day was over, Naruto felt all the exhaustion of the past few days catching up. His arm, now almost completely healed, ached. His muscles were still a bit sore and he could feel his chakra reserves were still on the low side. For him anyway, he could probably still run laps around his old classmates. All of this thinking though was to avoid the obvious looming over his head, Jiraiya. What was he supposed to do? If he took one look at the man he was sure he'd burst into tears. And then what? How was he gonna explain away that mess to his godfather? Or anyone else for that matter? And then there was the other matter that was slowly creeping into his brain. Why hadn't Jiraiya been there for him after his parents' death? Cause he was the Jinchuriki of the leaf. Cause he was the fourth son. Wouldn't he have been safer with Sanin as a guardian than a kid growing up on his own in a village that loathed him? Maybe it was the 12-year-old hormones or the bone-deep exhaustion, but he was mad. He didn't like the feeling, but he couldn't stop it either. It was like a burning coal deep in his gut that refused to be smothered. He hated it. Naruto. A voice interrupted his thoughts. He turned over in the futon to see Karen curled up staring at the opposite wall. He looked so small and vulnerable like this, not anything like the sassy, confident Kunoichi he met months ago, years from now. What's up? He whispered back. A long moment passed by before she said anything. What happens now? To me, that is. A frown burrowed its way onto Naruto's face. What do ya mean? She turned over on her side to face him, finally showing the lost expression painting her face. Without her glasses she looked much younger, much more scared. I mean like, I don't have a job, or a team, or anything here. What am I supposed to do? Well, what do you wanna do? He asked. A faraway look came over Karen in response to his question. He watched as she pondered over his words, really thinking it over. Eventually, her red eyes went unfocused, staring vacantly at the wall. Her bangs had slipped in front of them at some point, half obscuring the helpless look she wore. It hurt Naruto's heart to see it. I want to help people, she whispered at last. But I don't want to hurt myself to do it. A pause. I don't want to be what Kusa made me. Behind her glasses, Naruto could see tears welling in her eyes. He didn't know much about her past, just what she had said when they first met, but he knew it had been awful. Being forced to give your own life to those who held no regard for it was something no one should have to go through, least of all a young girl. The fact that she still wanted to help people despite all that amazed him. You know, Naruto began, Sakura is an amazing medical ninja. I'm sure if you ask she could teach you a few things if you want. Karen smiled at that, but it looked uncertain, withdrawn. And even if you don't wanna be a ninja anymore there's lots of things you can do. Another frown, this time twisting her lips in thought. No, I think I want to be a ninja, but, a sigh. Even if I do get the Hokage's approval I still don't have a team. Can't really be a genin without a team. And who would take in a genin from another village? I don't know if that's even a thing, she mumbled. Then a brilliant idea crossed Naruto's mind. So join our team. A pause. Then, wh but I, she tried to protest. No, 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 I'm sure Kakashi sensei would agree. And besides, we're family, you know. We gotta stick together. The girl frowned. Is that even allowed? She asked. Naruto shrugged. If it's not, what's a little rule breaking? Not like we haven't done it before, you know. And Karen smiled. A real, honest to God smile. I would love to, you know. Haha you said, you know. Oh shut up. I take back everything I said. Too late. 